Greetings. This is the Counter Racist Evolving Engineer Program. The acronym for the program is CREE, C R E E, and that is my handle. This evening, again, will be co hosted by LBM, which is an acronym for Loves Black Men, who will play some central part to the discussion that we're going to have this evening. How dark is too dark for real? Not talking about to sleep in, but to sleep with. The program we've been trying to have really for a couple of weeks, and it's our intention to host a forum. It'll be better if it's a forum. It'll be better if there are more folks besides LBM, myself, and a third panelist uh, who calls herself Ivy Bien Ami. Uh, it'll be better if she is able to join us, and I'm supposed to dial her from the switchboard in just the, uh, a little while. And, uh, of course, it will be even more enriched if we have both male and female calling in and being as transparent, pun intended, as we can be about uh, the preferences that <laughs> that have been installed on us regarding our dating and mating choices maybe a more sensitive issue for black females than males, but since we're a uh, bi-gender species, it's, uh, into, it's inextricably linked together. Uh, what we don't want to have tonight, and I, I put this in the program descri description, is uh, a series of avoidance techniques, a series of statements that are designed to avoid getting to the n nugget of a problem, a mental health problem, really, that we have to solve. Dismissive statements that we've come to hear, trite statements that go something like this. Oh, we 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 know that sisters come in a wide range of beautiful colors. That's one of the beautiful things about about black women is we come in a wide range of shapes and colors. And, you know, we we just have to learn to love all of us, you know, all of this enmity between light and dark, it's later for that. It's, it's, it's 2012. Let's get over that. Let's learn to love all of us. Well, of course we agree that we should learn to accept and appreciate each and every one of the people who are in our species, who are not oxyhominoids, or what I call white folks. Yes, of course. But that does not get to the nugget of the problem, which is that we do have color sickness. We do have hair sickness. We do have feature feature sickness. And uh, so, you know, uh, it's probably going to be on the tip of a lot of people's tongues to somehow get into the uh, management of avoidance by using that oft-accepted and trite statement that no one could deny the truth of. But uh, that will not be allowed to get in the way of really dealing with the fact that we do have color sickness. So um, let's go ahead and... Uh, phone the third panelist and hopefully she will pick up. Um, I have a little bit of housekeeping to do, however, before we do that. And that is to let folks know about programs that are coming up. On March 8th, I have confirmed with uh, the author of Why Darkness Matters. That is Edward Bruce Bynum, Ph.D., who is the head of psychological health at the University of Massachusetts in Amherst, and he co-edited the volume with Dr. Richard King, who is someone whose work I really, really admire, mm -hmm. and uh, talking about uh, neuromelanin and uh, how, it, how important it is for central nervous system functioning. So he's confirmed. I'm very, very excited to have him. He's going to be talking about his new book, which has not even been published, but it went to the publisher, uh, yeah, this week. And uh, then also, Mr. Curtis Cost, who has written a number. Yeah, well, you might you might be able to uh, introduce him even better. He's written a number of vol uh, volumes. He's written uh, volumes on and, and articles, done many uh, YouTube videos on the dangers of vaccines, and is. Uh, very well versed in the hoax that is HIV, and uh, so he's uh, he he doesn't do very many interviews anymore. And so I was really really thrilled that he has agreed to come on. We have not nailed down a date, but it will be sometime at the end of this month, 
and po or possibly the middle of next week, hopefully this month. But what we have agreed to do, he does like to have um he does like to have um uh well informed listeners. He likes well informed questions and I assured him that most of my listeners uh, fit exactly that description. And so what he advised is that folks go on over to his website, which is www.vaccinesaredangerous.com. Again, www.vaccinesaredangerous.com. You can uh, see a number of his videos, you can read a lot of his essays, and you can order the book um, from that spot. So uh, you, uh, I would encourage people to go ahead and do that now. Uh, I probably need to answer a question by one of uh, my loyal listeners who just uh, shot me a little email and asked why I don't have a chat room, and I haven't discussed that for a while. I do need to go ahead and call this this, this guest before she thinks that uh, I'm, I'm not going to call her. Um, the reason that I don't have a chat room is because I have found that it is counterproductive. Um, I know that uh, the host of another talk show, Gus T. Renegade, who also does an, an outstanding, um, the actually the best one in my opinion, I haven't seen one that comes close, the best one on the planet of counter-racism, he shut down his chat room for most of the time he's been broadcasting because there tends to be a lot of sniping, there tends to be a lot of... Um, of criticisms of black folks that is counterproductive to the to the conversation, and it does tend to distract the the listeners from hearing what it is that uh, is being said, especially when we have guests. Um, I have found that it, it, it generates a lot of conflict, and that's something that we strive to avoid. The only conflict that we're trying to deal with, that we should be trying to deal with, is with the people who are causing us all the problems and all the crowding, and that's what I call the oxyhominoids. Uh, other folks like to call them white people. I don't give them the latter designation. I don't think they meet the definition of a of a person, uh, generally speaking. So that's me. That's a disclaimer. That that does not mean that the guest that I'm about to phone or any future guests uh, have that opinion. And LBM will have to speak for herself. Okay. So since we're dialing from the switchboard, you will be hearing some uh, some tones, and um, that'll be me phoning her. So. Let's do that. Call failed. Oh, no. That's all right. That's all right. We'll try it one more time. Oh, I know why it failed. You aren't supposed to have parentheses and dashes. Hmm. Let's do it again. Parent coordinator of oh. Middle School in Canarsie, Brooklyn. Okay, I'm not let me see if I can. Uh, how do you hang up on Please this? Please leave me a brief message, including no, your name, no, no. telephone number, and your child's name, and I will return your call as soon as Okay. For information and updates, not good. please visit our website at well? www.is68.org. Thank you for calling. Have a beautiful day. Hmm. Please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. Huh. At some point, I should be able to hang up, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm not seeing how I do that. There's no red handle there? No, there's no red handle. And otherwise they're going to get our entire program <laughs> on this uh, on their answering machine. So that's not going to be good. Okay. 
pardon folks. At some point, they should just hang up, right? Mm -hmm. No. Hmm. No, no. We got a full switchboard, too. Okay. All right. Hmm. Could she be one of those on the switchboard? She might be. So let's, mm. uh, want to let you know that, uh, I hope the other 347 calls back. want to let you know, if, uh, that we're going to take as many people as want to speak. So, um, oh, wow. You know what? I think that was her. Because she just hung up. If you, if that was you, Ms. Ben Ivey, uh, 347, please call back. I'll know that it's you. Okay, so as we're uh, developing this, com- this, this, this discussion, uh, since it looks like it's just going to be LBM and I to start, uh, give us about... 20 minutes to develop the topic. And then at the 20 minute point, please, as many people as who you would want to. Uh, maximum time permitted oh my gosh. for recording your message. If you That's are satisfied with your message, press uh, 1. To listen to your message, press 2. To erase oh, and re record, press 3. Okay, I guess we need to wait for it to, them to hang up are on you us. Still now. there? You have reached the maximum time <laughs> permitted for recording your message. If you are satisfied with your message, Press 1. To listen to your message, press 2. To erase and re-record, press 3. Are you still there? You have reached the maximum time permitted for recording your message. If you are satisfied with your message, press 1. To listen to your message, press 2. To erase and re-record, press 3. Okay, let me see if this is her. By any chance, is this Miss Ben Ivy? Sorry you're having trouble. Your message has been sent. Goodbye. Well, that's good news. Yeah. Okay. If you, I just, if your last four digits are 8536 and you are Ms. Uh, ben I say so. If not, I'll close your mic. Uh, no, this isn't. It's, it's me. I'm one just here to give you ladies support, even if I may not call the show. Excellent. Nice to hear from you, M- M1. I'm going to... Uh, please call. Yeah, but please do put the <laughs> hand up. Please put Stay the hand up. on. I'm going to close the mic for right now. We're going to develop the topic. And then in about 20 minutes, I hope your hands will go up. We want this to be just more than uh, she and I. Uh, sensitive, to- sensitive topic. Um, why don't you start off, LBM? Okay, well... Yeah, this is this has been a, a little bit of time coming in. I'm hoping that we get um, some calls in with some people that are really, really um, ready to wrestle with this thing, work with it, and be really honest about you know how we really feel about you know dark skin, dark complexion. Um, what what I what I don't want to happen is for us to reduce this to a question of. Uh, some inherent self-esteem issue on the on the part of dark complexion black women because I noticed that a lot of these discussions that's where it goes and that's where we really don't want to go here because it's real it's a real issue and if we are really talking about countering racism about getting to a point where we love ourselves and, and all of our, as uh, Dr. Wilson would say, crystal blackness, then, you know, we're going to have to deal with the reality of of this as a problem. Um, I was looking at a, um, I think, I, I, I misplaced my notes on it, but I think it was Villanova that last year did a... Um, did did some kind of um, study on the fact that darker complexioned um, uh, uh, convicted folk, um, particularly um, females now as well, get like at least twelve percent on on average on on average a minimum of twelve percent higher um, sentences than lighter complexion. Um, you know, uh, con- convicted folk, 
and ten, tend to get longer sentences and tend to get hit with harsher um, charges. And this is this is simply based on skin color. So th- this is this is real. Um, what I would like to um, hear from some of the folks. Uh, kind of goes back to uh, something that Tater Pie um, was saying, and I was really um, a little, a little taken aback at how some of the folks seem to think that it would have would be almost a punishment if they had to uh, be with and mate with someone of their own complexion if 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 they if they were of a darker complexion. You still there? I am here. <laughs> um, I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of um, interference. Really? I don't hear it. Oh, I'm getting knocking and... St- yeah, it's heavy. You're, like, hearing it, you're hearing it right now? I'm hearing it right now, the whole time that I was speaking. That's strange. I hear nothing like that. We're not, not, not a good tech start. Um, and I really don't know what to do about that because you're on... My Skype line. Do you want to to hang up and call in? Yeah, I wonder if anyone else. I'm getting it pretty heavy. Um, let me see. I, there, I have someone on my um, on my Gmail. Let me see if if he's hearing it. It's as if there's like a loud speaker or something on. No, he does not hear it. So hmm. it's, it's just you, and I don't know who's doing it. Um, someone has their hand up, so let's let's see if they have something to tell us about that. If you are the blocked caller, I'm opening up your mic now, and it is open now. Yeah, hi, how are you? Uh, I am doing as well as can be expected, and yourself, sir? Absolutely. If I were doing any better, I would be twins. I know this voice. Good Lord. I know this voice. Who is this? <laughs> uh, yes, my, my concern is, is uh, you're talking about male and female dating practices? We are. We're about to get into it. We wanted to develop the topic, uh, I, and I, I, I thought possibly you had something to tell us about the nature of our, our audio, and that's the reason I opened your mic. Because we do uh, we do want to hear uh, from the listeners probably more sure. than anything else this this evening. But we wanted to develop the topic for about twenty minutes first, and then we were going to go ahead and, and open up the mics. Oh, fine. Okay, I'll uh, I'll hang out. Stand by. Okay, sounds good, sir. All right. Okay, so what do we do about your audio issue? Um, if if I'm the only one hearing it, we can keep going. Well, that, but if it's that distracting to you, it's going to it's going to um, take away from your input, so I'm thinking that maybe you should you should dial dial in, or should do you want me to hang up with you and 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 try to reconnect with you on Skype? Yeah, do that. But you know, I mean, I, it just came in because it wasn't that way when we were talking previously. Let's hang up and try to reconnect. Let me try to reskype you. Okay. Greetings and love to one and all. This message is brought to you by Mr. Anderson. And I'm Mr. Anderson. I'm here to tell you about igrowugrow.biz. That's I-G-R-O-W-U-G-R-O-W dot B-I-Z. Where we empower you to produce your produce. Is this the year that you eat what you grow? Is this the year that you get that garden right? I say yes. Please visit igrowugrow.biz where we will give you instructional media and inspiration to get you growing. Everything from composting to transplanting to seed starting 
to natural pest control with household items that you probably already have. These things will be yours to have if you join the I Grow You Grow movement. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Get that garden right this year with I Grow You Grow Biz. Thank you for tuning in to C R E E. Fare ye well. Okay, we have done the best that we can to resolve the tech problems. We're going to move ahead with the discussion. Let me go ahead and open the discussion and try to develop the topic this way. Um, personal experience. And this is something that LV and M and I were going over again uh, before we went on the air. I had not conceived of myself as having issues with skin tone uh, ever. It's just not something that has ever been an issue for me. I have always been very open that it took me a while to get over my hair sickness. But I never had what Dr. Welsing, Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, I thought that I never had color sickness. And then an event which I described maybe about uh, four months ago on another program uh, surprised me with how much it bothered me. I was very surprised. It came out of the uh, blue, seemingly, and um, and I was bothered by how much it bothered me. And and, and here is what I I've talked about before, and I'll I'll talk about it here again. I happened to be spending some time with my sister, and uh, we just happened to be visiting a relative, and we were in a hotel room together. And uh, you know, as sisters will do, we were talking about various this or that, and we began talking about her sons. And I, you know, she's my sister. She's the only sibling I have. And I just, you know, and we're in this hotel room together. I just thought, let me just ask, what's with your, what's, what's, what's with your boys? Why don't they ever date black girls? And, uh, well, lately, the older one has been known to date black girls, but I asked her about the younger one. Why doesn't he, why doesn't he date black girls? And, you know, she has her hand on her, head on her hand and she says to me well we'll call him JG JG's been very clear he said he doesn't like dark girls I said what do you mean I, I, I looked at her and I said is that right you know I thought I was being uh, you know penetrating and uh, that bothered me so I looked at her and I said well you do know that probably includes you so she doesn't like, and she looked back at me and said, "Oh no." He was very specific. He said that the darkest he could go was as dark as Auntie's color. He only has one Auntie. That's me. And I remember my stomach just doing this dip, and that was very hurtful to me. And I became obsessed in that hour. After she said that, of course, I continued talking with her. But I, I realized I'd become very obsessed with, am I really darker than my sister? I was looking at my skin, and she didn't know it. I kept looking at my skin and comparing my skin to her skin, and I'm like, why is this bothering me so much? It was so hurtful. And I think I've become color conscious so much since more since that event, which is a few months ago, than I think I ever was before. Uh, and then I'm not exactly sure how the subject came up with LBM and I. I think it was we were we were dealing with this whole issue of black males dating non-black females and uh, the color sickness around that. And uh, she said, "Listen, we need to have a really candid discussion about it. We need to get into it with more depth." And because I had a new openness to having that discussion because of what had recently happened to me, I was like, "Okay, can I plumb the depths of this anymore? What else is there in me?" You know, because if I'm expecting other people to be forthcoming about it, you know, especially in this so-called counter-racist group of people, mm -hmm. uh, I, I need to be able to do it too. Is there something else in me that I need to, you know, that I need to just fess up to? And so I thought about it and thought about it. And we're talking about dating and mating, and I thought, no, I mean, some of the most beautiful men that I can think of right now who, you know, uh, it's very difficult for me not to swing my head and look at 
if I happen to be in their in their presence and I'm and I shouldn't because I'm with my husband who I you know adore uh, are absolutely crystal black. There's you know from Sudan, um, you know a couple in particular, stunning. Uh, darkness of skin has never been an issue in terms of what I'm attracted to. But then I thought, all right, you've got that part. You you know you've got that part clear. Now, what about yourself? Because you know you have this issue ever since your sister said what she said. And then I, you know, I had to just fess up. Uh, I don't like really light skin. I wouldn't want to be any lighter than I am. What I want to be darker. And the skin color that I am is roughly about Whitney Houston's, maybe, a, you know, with, you know, in terms of hue. I mean, it's got... Everybody's got different t- tones to their skin, red and olive, and um, some a little, maybe a little bit lighter than her, but that's about my, my hue. And, uh, but what I, you know, what's the issue with me being darker? Well, I really don't have a problem with being darker. I, I can go darker. How dark? I said to myself, how dark? Let's go, let's start with the darkest. Do you have a problem with that, Cree? Uh, yeah, I do. I do. I would not want to be that dark. And I had to ask myself, well, if you're attracted to it, why wouldn't you want to be that dark? And I really, because of when that question, when I posed that question to myself, because that question came after this event with my sister and the nephew, I can't, unless you gave me sodium pentothal, truth serum, I don't know that I can say with complete certainty that it has to do with that emotional event, which is that I am I have, if, if I were given the choice to be very, very light skinned, which I don't particularly want to be, uh, versus as dark as uh, Dinka or Nuer from Sudan, crystal black, w- which would I choose? Well, I wouldn't choose the Dinka black, mm. the crystal black. Okay, now the, the reason for that, can, uh, if I don't have sodium pentothal truth serum, can I say for sure that that it's the reason I'm about to give you? Of course, not with 100% sure, uh, sureness, certainty. But but I am as certain as I can be that it isn't because I find it ghastly. It isn't because I personally find it ugly. It is because I am afraid of all of the rejection and abuse that I mm-hmm. take with that skin color. Now, that could be, hey, it could just be that I'm just making excuses for myself. I don't think that I am. No. And uh, so, so when when you say you became uh, more color conscious than you had been before your nephew said that, you mean in terms of yourself? So you you would not you you would not have wanted to be a complexion that he or you know a, a, a black male would would not be attracted to. Yes. But right. I also, but I also became acutely aware at that time, and, and I hadn't been before. And people will say, "How could you not be?" Well, <laughs> the circumstances of my formation are such that you were black or you weren't. You know, there weren't very many black people where I where I grew up, so you were black or you weren't black. And uh, there wasn't this this focus on minute gradations of hue. You know, I wasn't light skinned. I was, you know what we thought of as medium brown in those days, which was dark, and which is dark probably now. But I, I was just a black person. I was clearly a black person. That's all there was to it. Um, but I became acutely aware after that that people are are judging each other, comparing mm-hmm. you, that uh, people that I'm very close to are comparing you. And so like at, when she told me that, that I became aware of thoughts in his head about comparative hue, that then I thought, though these are thoughts, these are scripts and thoughts that are running in people's minds all the time. So now, when I'm out and about, I'm aware of that comparative thing, that script that's running in people's ha- head about how my color compares to the next person's or how theirs does, which was not there before. Right. And uh, and now that it's there, I don't know how to get it out of my head. But now that it's there, it's like okay. Like first thing is okay. Well, I don't. I know that I want. I don't want to be the darkest dark because because that that hurt me when I got rejected even by my own nephew. Um, so that's what I mean. 
Right, and now you 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 posed like, uh, you know, what I see is like polar opposites, where you said if you had to be light complexion or, you know, this darkest of of, of African complexion. Um, I I I I'm not even. I'm not even dealing with with the extreme of of light. I'm I'm talking about even within the shades of of uh brown brown to to black, I guess. And my my concern with the, with it was that even within the, you know, um movements that I've been involved in, even within the the Afrocentric movement, within the uh, a nationalist movement within the counter racist you know uh, uh ideologies, even within those spheres of consciousness that exists there there's there's some there is some uh uh low low in quotes of 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 blackness that even those people, those of us who call ourselves conscious, I think, will not go. Will not willingly go. And and that's kind of what I, I wanted to explore. Now, after we had that conversation, I, I thought about it in terms of myself. And I, 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 you know, I would say that I have, like, probably so, some kind of darkness fetish. So... You know, I'll just put that out there. So, and and then I, you know, I thought I, I you know, I, I really thought about it because I really wanted to be honest with myself, and I really came to to the conclusion that they're really, I, I have I haven't seen it in terms of people that I've found attractive, you know, people that I've been with and people that I've found attractive. I don't think that there is a a darkness that would be too dark for me. In terms of um, attraction, the only the only thing that I that I do find um, not attractive to me and kind of spooky is the I guess what we might call Dravidians or I guess some um, some of the like very dark so-called Aborigines in Australia that darkness with the straight hair that I can't handle. But if you're dark with the, you know, the helix, you know, kinky nappy hair, it, I don't, I, I don't, I don't have a problem with how dark, um, you know, you may be in terms of the attraction. Now it's very interesting what you said in terms of what we would be attracted to versus what we see ourselves as being. I never, I, I. I mean, I just, I, I really, I'm really in love with darker, darker skin tones. But that's a very good question that you raise in terms of how dark would I preferably um, want to be if I had the, if I had the, um, I mean, I know I, I have no problem being out in, in the sun, getting as dark as as I can possibly get. For myself, but if it were possible for me to be, you know, as Dr. Manson say, crystal black, the blackest of black, I, I don't think that I would mind for myself. But in terms of the 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 treatment, particularly from from within, you know, it's definitely a question. Um, I'm not avoiding it. I'm not saying I definitely would not want to be, but you know, I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to leave that question out there for, for myself. Now, I will admit this: upon witnessing, you know, some of the the the, the testimonies and stories, see that 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 interference went away just like that. Are you still there, Cree? Cree? Free, you're back. Yes, yes. I'm sorry. Okay. I, I thought I was rid of the interference, but I was rid of the interference and you. 
Oh, so it's something, okay. that's, something that's coming from my mic for you. It, yeah, the interference went away, but so did you. Hmm, okay. Okay. So, um, where was I? Uh, you were talking in about... In terms of, right, in terms of particular my children, but particularly my daughter, of upon um, witnessing, you know, several just really heart-wrenching um, testimonies from, from young girls, particularly teenage girls of darker complexions, you know, speak about what, you know, what, what they've been through. I, I really had to admit that I was, I was I'm kind of glad that my daughter hasn't had to go through that along with, you know, everything else of just, you know, being a, you know, a black female in, in, in the, in the society. And, and I, and that's sad for me, mm-hmm. you know, that's sad for me because, you know, as I, as I raised them and, you know, come, you know, come through my life, I've actually had to, um, I've actually had to be conscious of the fact of always, you know, complimenting and lauding, you know, dark, dark complexion, dark complexion children, you know, dark complexion images. And I've, I've had to, um, I mean, it's turned out, it's turned out well in terms of, you know, what, what they seem to be attracted to at, at this point. And, you know, you know, what my daughter was a little older, you know, is attracted to, but, you know, I, I'm, I was, I'm thinking back, and I'm saying, you know, in terms of all my praise of, of that darkness, you know, I, I fortunately it seemed like along the way I, I, you know, I didn't get across to her that, you know, or to them that they, you know, I didn't think that they were the most beautiful of, of black children because, you know, they weren't darker. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't think that you'd have to worry about, well, what I was going to say is I didn't think that you would have to worry about that because all of the imagery outside of your control would take care right. of their self-esteem as far as that's concerned. But you were more right. concerned about what they thought you thought. Is that correct? Right, right, right. That's that's exactly right. Well, you're such an anomaly that... Uh, in terms it, of what? You're such an anomaly in terms of your 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 preference and the way that you've raised your children <laughs> that, 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 that focusing on in on that too much will be in a way avoiding the issue because that certainly isn't where most people are and but I'm curious now because I because because I'd never considered it before because mm. I I know for uh, for certain oh, let me see if that's what's causing your knocking I know for certain that there are people, and lots of them, mm-hmm. who simply find a lighter hue to be better to behold with the eye. Absolutely. But, but I don't know if this uh, preoccupation with dating and ultimately mating with lighter skinned people mm-hmm. that both black males and black females have uh is how much of that is about you know just the old timey chattel slavery thing I want my child to have advantages uh right I want everyone to value my child, not just me. I don't want to be the only person who my daughter hears tell her that she's beautiful right, and that sure. she then thinks I'm a liar because nobody else backs it up, you know um so I don't know how much of it is that um I really don't. I know that's what it is for me. Um, you know, to to the extent that I can be the the the, the most the most honest about it. Um, yeah. Right. And I and I think that that is the case. Um, you know, whether that is whether it's articulated the way that you just did or not, I think that is the case for a lot of people. Certainly. For I think a lot of of black females, I don't I don't think I don't I, I, you know I don't know it would it would be a question I, I would like the males to um to answer but I I don't I'm not sure that the 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 status of the children 
uh, are as, would would be as is as much of a concern for the males as it is for the females. But it would be interesting to if if we can really get some honesty from the males on that. But I know that um, you know for you know at least in terms of, of females that 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 I know and know of you know that that pain of how they were and are treated as darker complexioned um you know women drives them to not want to have their children go go through that now how how are we going to deal with that in terms of countering white domination if we cannot even deal with elevating the, the, the our darkness and, and and the darker of, of us. Right. Okay, well we said that we were gonna open up the um the switchboard and it's already been I think we're forty five minutes into the program. So uh there are two hands up. I will take them in the order that they came in, and uh, let's have that. Uh, let's be as, as uh, what's the one that, that Gus likes to use? As honest as we can bear. Mm. Yeah. Let's, let's be as honest as we can bear, uh, but let's try to be as courteous as we can possibly um, manage. So, blocked caller. I will be opening up your mic, and if you are the caller at 4644, last four digits, I'll be opening up your mic next. So, block caller, who, I, Mr. Sincere, I think is his name, but I could have it incorrect. Mr. Solution, hi, are you speaking to me now? I sure am. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, this uh, color thing is very much, from a man's standpoint, this color thing is very much a subordinate uh, position. The real position is not communicating effectively, and we just sort of uh, camp out at the, uh, you know, uh, I would say uh, dimin uh, dimin the smaller things, the, the diminutive things, uh, when we don't deal with the larger issues. So it's, it's a retreat to nothingness, as it were. Uh, men like women, regardless as to what color they are, uh, beauty in a woman is considered an inherent property, Okay. That's the reason we allow you to wear makeup, and you guys use over $5 billion worth of makeup per annum. So women are, are allowed not only to be beautiful, but to highlight their beauty. So this thing about color is really not a male issue. We just like attractive women regardless as to what color they're in, uh, they come in. And there are unattractive women that are light-skinned and dark-skinned, but attractive women are what men like. Now, if we could get through the communication barrier and uh, get rid of these old outmoded, uh, non-workable uh, standards for relating to each other, and you mentioned dating, and, of course, uh, you know, become better able to communicate, we could work through all of these. And I would say that the women have the greatest power in this particular area. Now, men may play this game and act as if they do, but that's not true. You all determine uh, whether or not there is a conversation. So if you all were more conversational and more mature and forthright with respect to having a conversation with a man, hi, how are you, let's go to a park, let's talk, let's get to know each other. If women didn't play this game, and I'm specifically talking about American women, we could be, we could be much further along the continuum uh, to uh, harmonious relationships than we are. So this, this color thing is nothing more than a red herring. That's all that is in the world. So let me ask you this. Um, when, when you have women across the globe, this is like a huge thing in, in, in Senegal these days. Um, it's, it's huge in Brazil. It's huge in the islands. Um, when you have women across the globe bleaching their skin, would, is, a, is that a minor? Is that a minor thing? Well, I, I don't disagree that women can get wrapped up in superficiality, and I think that's exactly what has happened here. Uh, but I'm, I'm primarily focusing on American culture. But in American culture, it's like I'm telling you right now: we like women. I've, I've actually proven to women. 
that uh, this color thing doesn't matter. It doesn't matter nearly as much as you're um, presenting yourself. And I've, I've shown w women in magazines, very attractive, dark-skinned women, chocolate-skinned women, whatever you want to call it. And what women like to do is retreat to the non-communication, superficial standpoints. Well, it's about my color. No. If a woman who's dark-skinned gets up off her butt and goes over and talks to guys, socializes with guys, she's much further along, as I say, the continuum as, as in terms of developing a relationship than an attractive woman who's playing hard to get, or whatever, I mean a light-skinned woman who's trying to play hard to get. So what happens here, and I'm not saying we don't have our idiosyncrasies. I mean, come on, we're human. But I'm talking about the solution, the way to get past it, is for you all to become more conversational, not sit back and hatch the egg of light skin, dark skin. We don't care about that. I'm telling you as an apex alpha male, we don't care about that. What we care about is how supportive you are, how communicative you are, how, how you will uh, show yourself worthy of being with us. That's what we care about, your personality, your character, your emotional availability. Those are the things that we really care about. Now, let me, let me, let me ask you this, because that, that sounds really great, and, yeah. and, and I'm sure for you that that, that is the case. For most now, quality what, men, ma'am, that not just me, for most quality okay. men. But go ahead. Okay. This goes to what in, what informs your um understanding of what is uh quote unquote attractive. Now if you have if you if if you have these the this these this anecdotal evidence of darker skin, uh darker complexion black women saying you know, I go out with my lighter skinned friends and the guys don't even see me. If you have a number of dark skinned black women saying that, why would you not recognize that? Why would you not accept that that is a, that is a truth? That's a very good point, and I'll address that uh, very definitively this way. It's all about a game. All of those people that are participating in that are just quintessentially superficial. None of them are about anything. It's just about animal grunts and, and, and expressions and just absolute silliness. That's the reason nothing develops for any of them, or, you know, virtually. And so it's not about communication. It's not about maturity. It's not about uh, being intelligent. It's just about game playing and running games. Uh, she's not going up to guys and talking to guys to get to know them in a matter-of-fact way. It's, it's all about animal symbolism and gestures, and that's not where we should be. So I agree with you. I'm not saying this doesn't take place. I know it takes place. But what I'm just doing is telling you why it's taking place, because we're living like ducks. When you, we should be soaring like eagles, having a conversation just like I'm having with you now. I guarantee you, if women's pickers weren't broken by them, you know, just sitting back and playing this game, if they were talking to men and getting to know men, this whole thing would evaporate like a mist. Well, certainly appreciate what you have to say. It's obviously very thoughtful. Uh, you've obviously put a lot of thought into it. Uh, I certainly have some responses to it, but we have a lit up switchboard. So I'm going to leave your mic open and ask that you just hold on a bit and let a few other people uh, add to the conversation, and then we'll come back around to you. Thank you for uh, weighing in. But your mic is open. If you could just mute it yourself while they're talking so there's not sound interference, that would be helpful. But uh, I definitely still left your, your mic open. We're going now to the caller at 4644. Your mic is now open. Good afternoon. Or good evening, should I say? Good evening, Mr. Pianchi. <laughs> you know who that is. <laughs> you have a very distinctive voice, sir. <clears throat> you know my philosophy, too. Not sure I do. Well, why don't you go ahead and uh, say well, so? I'm a male also, and I totally do not fall in line with your last spokesperson. Uh, 
Now, as far as I, I have no problem communicating with any women, and I choose to commu- those who I choose to communicate with. But my preference, if I want to be cordial and close to a woman, my preference is a dark complexion woman, a black woman. And I don't have, I just don't have no desires for, uh, no intimate desires for a light complexion lady. You know, Beyonce and, uh, you know, Halle Berry's and this, now you're Angela Bassett and Darker. I think she's very, very beautiful myself in my eyes. And it does make a difference because I've heard that said by friends of uh, my former wife who's deceased, who was also dark complexion. Uh, my daughter, she, uh, her favorite, her tendency is a dark complexion uh, men. And, you know, these things do go. My grandson, 13 year old, he said, Papa, I'm not never, you don't have to worry about me marrying a white woman. So, uh, they do, males do take on these aspirations, and that's not being racist neither. You know, I disagree with your definition of racist. That there's prejudice and, uh, and some of the things that uh, discrimination. But prejudice and discrimination can be good and very useful when applied in a manner where you aren't offending or violating someone's constitutional right if you know what I'm talking about. Okay, I, you've definitely raised a lot of important issues. We're, we're trying to focus on this whole mating dating uh, uh, in terms of color issue this evening. So let me go ahead and take another caller, and we'll leave your mic open as well. But if you could mute your speaker, uh, it, you know we won't have sound issues. We'll come back around to you. If you are the caller at 6520, your mic is open. Hello, lady. Hello, sir. Hello. Um, hi. Um, I've been listening to the conversation. Um, and um, I, um, I I would just give you my age. I'm 26, so I'm a little bit younger than the other males that called in. Um, but listen to the uh, first gentleman. Um, I have to say that I like staunchly disagree with, you know, his analysis. Um, uh, From what I see, I would have to say that the color of a woman has a huge bearing on their uh, probability of acquiring a date uh, or some or quality mates in general. Um, For my age group, uh, a dark-skinned woman was the last woman that was considered Mm -hmm all throughout my uh, schooling, from K through college. So, mm. And um, if you look into a dark-skinned woman's eyes, you can see pain. Um, I, at least I can. I see, you know, this degree of where they expect people to be, uh, I guess it happens to they expect people to be dismissive, dismissive of them. Um, mm. Also, uh, just culturally, if you understand how communication works, um, a lot of people assume that communicating is the things that you say, but also a great deal of communicating um, is the things that you don't say, the things that you don't see. Um, No one is saying that dark-skinned women are ugly, but you can can effectively communicate that dark-skinned women are ugly by never saying they're pretty. Mm-hmm. And that is what happens in um, popular culture oftentimes, all throughout TV, cartoons, every aspect of imagery. You only see lights get attractive women. And what this does is it socializes the young black male to envision a future of them marrying a light woman. It may not be a white woman, but they only, as a child, you have dream of becoming married. You have that picture of an ideal mate. And what society does by never depicting dark-skinned people having sexual relationships and and loving relationships, they begin to envision a future of them marrying someone light. And it's even gotten worse to the, at least I see, 
regard, well, black men are, you know, marrying Latina or something else. And um, it's it's very destructive to the black family structure, and it creates, you know, it, it makes the confusion a lot worse. Um, so I just, I just, from what I see, uh, especially among younger black males, they they don't value dark skinned women the same. Um, a lot of times in fraternities, uh, they uh, they sexually use women, dark skinned women a lot more frequently than uh, lighter women. Um, black men will uh, they'll have sex with dark skinned women, but they won't. It'll take them a lot longer to come around and say, "This is my woman." Um, where they're more eager to, I guess, the term they use is wife, uh, a mixed woman or a light woman. So I just wanted to uh, add in that this uh, the thing that just you like someone is attractive is attractive. I would have to say that. You cannot say that because the idea of attractiveness is socially constructed and manufactured under a white supremacist system. So that consequently produces white supremacist manufactured beauty. And um, I'll, I'll leave it at that for now. You know, I want to be as open to everybody's point of view so that people, when I say open, I want people to feel. Um, free to state their points of view and as a as a hostess it's a challenge when you have a caller say something that is closer to your point of view than maybe some of the other callers um, so if you are a caller whose point of view is something different you want to express something different please still go ahead and do that uh, but I will say that that has been my experience and I will say that I will go so far as to say that I think that that has been the experience of 99% of all the black females that I know. They would describe their exactly what you just did. And uh, if, just just one second, just one second. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I think it maybe was in 2009. You can look it up in the archives. I did a program with Dr. William Darity, who's an economist. And he did a very exhaustive mathematical scientific study of the influence of skin shade on marriage prospects. And what he found is that uh, it significantly affected the marriage rates as well as the earning capacity of the, mar of the husbands that they did have according to the skin shade of the female. Mm. Um, and that was done by an economist and it was a rigorous rigorous study with the, all of these scientific protocols. So I'm not sure that there's any evidence, either anecdotal or even if we would say scientific, that skin shade is not a significant factor in attracting dates, mates, and the quality of each. And that's just something I wanted to add. Go ahead, LBM. Um, I just wanted to know, is, is that young man still on the line? He is, yes. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to ask uh, ask you a question. Um, you you said you you went through college. Yes. And were you involved with any of the um, you know black student organizations or? Um, no, I I wasn't. I, I mean, I knew people, but I was never part of any of those organizations. Right. So um, currently, are are you you know in in association with any you know? Nationalists or you know, Afrocentric or counter racist organiz organizations? No, I'm not a part of any organization. Oh, okay. Because I, I was going to ask you, you know, what what are you seeing in terms of, you know, the men in those those communities of, of, around you? How, how are um, they choosing? Well, to be honest, I've been to some, I guess, conscious events. Um, it's not much difference. Uh, right, it right. Take, it takes a lot to root out that that uh, white supremacist thinking. Mm -hmm. So it really is no difference. Um, however, I've seen one brother who definitely only had dark skin sisters, so, but most of them know. Well, thank you so much for weighing in. And, uh, well, definitely, if, you, if you'll stay on the line, we'll definitely want to... Uh, include you in the conversation when it's a little bit more round, round table, round robin. Uh, just want to make sure everybody has a uh, an opportunity to say what they have to say without being disputed at this point. So please, please stay with us. 
if you are the other block caller, not the one whose call we first took, I am now opening your line, and it's taking a little while. There you go. If you are the other block caller, what have you to say on this? Hello? Yeah, that's you. Oh, um, I just wanted to request for everyone to um, say their age. That's all I want to it, Well, I had something to say, but you wanted people who um, are kind of arguing, I guess, so I'm just going to be quiet. But I just asked for people it's to tater pie. Speak. It's definitely tater mm-hmm. pie. <laughs> well, tater pie, I'm not going to give you my age, but I'll give you a range. I'm over 40. I, I was more wanting the males, more wanting the males to say it. Let okay. You know. uh, I guess we should probably go back around. Um, T- maybe. Tater pie, what, 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 what is, what do, you, what are you thinking the difference would, would be? Um. Can you be more specific? Sorry, I'm a little. What you're, you're saying, you're saying that there, there's there's a difference in the in the thinking between older brothers and and younger brothers. That perhaps this last brother at 26 was seeing things a, a little more differently than the other brothers because they were older. Um, it could be yes. Uh, yes. I don't know because I, I guess for some black males they they mature to, for them to actually pick a mate that good for them and not what other people want or tell them to want comes later in life. So that's why I was just curious about the ages. That's all. And okay. um. We'll definitely try to get those ages. Uh, I wanted to ask uh, the all of the the callers. Uh, this has a relationship to the age thing, and you and I have talked about this tater pie. Is what is the definition of dark? You know, does it? It, it seems like it changes by age. Yeah. It, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, we'll definitely we'll uh, go down the line again with that second line of questioning. But thanks for. Bringing yeah. up the issue of age, let me take the caller at nine one two one. If that is you, your line is open. Um, hey Cree and hey LBM. <laughs> Hello Blacker. Okay. Blacker. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> All right. Um, I would just like to uh, first state that. I- what just happened? Uh-oh. What on earth? What the? Blacko, we're hearing music. Let me see if if it goes away. If I okay, it is his. Okay, it's, it's his line. Blacka, for some reason, all we heard was like some sort of music when we opened your line. I don't know. Uh, let's give it a few seconds and see if it can correct itself so we can open it, open it back up. I mean, I had something else playing on my device. Okay, here we go. You're fine now. Yeah, I was just and like I said, I wanted to uh, just fundamentally disagree with the first caller and. Totally agree with the second caller. Um, to say that men don't care about women's skin tone is just not true. There's no way you can be in this country and be black and know that and think that black men are concerned with color. We're not color struck. I hear it all the time. Wanting a light skinned woman as opposed to a dark skinned woman because a dark skinned woman is considered ugly. I mean, that's just our experience here our brainwashing and our self hatred. Okay, I would just like to hear the argument. I think the argument, I'm going to go ahead and um, open up his mic, uh, the first caller, and let him explain himself better because it's his point of view. It se- the argument he seemed to be advancing was that when it comes to position- positioning oneself in the glass refrigerator case to- for selection or whatever the position is in the market, uh, that uh, adornments, w- including whatever the value is of skin tone, uh, are put front and center, and that those are the things that, therefore, males are left to somehow negotiate. It almost sounded as if he was saying that skin color is more important to females than it is to males, 
And so that we almost, almost, and I could be incorrect, that it's almost as if we're ordering ourselves according to skin tone, and then uh, males are somehow uh, subjected to or left to make these undesirable choices based on skin color because of the way we line ourselves up, but but not necessarily in the way that they would. Those just happen to be the ones that are up front and easiest to choose and communicate with. But so I've somehow gotten that incorrect. Let's give him an opportunity to uh to clarify. Cree? Uh yes. Yeah, let's let's definitely do that. But I think a a, a good question uh as we go back around would also be um to to the males and anyone who calls in is would you want to be darker than you are? Mm, that's a very good question. I like that. So why don't we do that? So as we go back through the hands that are up uh, if you care to answer the question and your hand is still up, we have uh, that question on the table. Would you, they're all male callers, which is very interesting. So far, right. Except, except for Tater Pie, who only had a question right. for the males. <laughs> it's really, isn't that interesting? Um, would you want to be darker than you are? Than you are. Than you yourself are. And then right. secondly, uh, the question is, if you care to give your general age range. Uh, oh, no, and, and the third question, and I'll remind everybody. Uh, how dark is what how is, dark is too dark? <laughs> yeah. Well, no. For me, the question is first of all, how dark is dark? I just right. want to know what dark is because dark for me is different than people who seem to be much younger than me. Um, I'm I am now considered dark skin, and I didn't find that out till you know two three years ago. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's go back around. If the first block caller, the first question on the table is, what is your general age range? Your mic is open. Yeah, I'm in my 50s, but I, I wanted to respond to what you just said. And you did capture what I said decently. Thank you for that. Uh, none of the other men really heard what I was saying. I recognize that we are superficial, but not substantive. Uh, we don't have any businesses, so we really don't value each other. So all we generally can focus upon is the extreme reality. Furthermore, I, I recommend that we talk to each other, we communicate. At least that is a substantive thing to do. So, uh, yes, you were correct when you said women order themselves more along the lines of color than uh, men order you. It's like I said before, if a woman's weight, attitude, and emotional availability are intact, then of course we want to get to know you. And if 72% of black women are single, I know damn well a lot of those are gradations of color, light-skinned women, damn near white women, whatever. But because they're black, it's that attitude that uh, you know negates them from actually negotiating a, a healthy relationship. So uh, you know, again, I'm not surprised that we don't focus on the real issues because we uh, hardly ever do. So that's I, I'm offering a solution. If, if black women, ipso facto, that they're black, are undesirable, then how do you change that? I, I don't believe that. First of all, I think that's stupid. It's regressive, and it's nonsensical. Uh, actually, darker women, if you if you really want to go there, uh, darker women, you know, actually look better than lighter skinned women. Because I've known a lot of light skinned women, I can see through their damn skin. I see all those blue and red veins and that kind of crap. But I mean, that's okay too, because that's in everybody. But it's just hidden in the darker skinned woman. Trust me. Men of quality are not that focused on your color. They're more focused on your character and your availability. Uh, let, let me ask you this question. What is dark to you? Can you give me a, a, a celebrity, who, or, male or female, who you it, would consider? It, it, see, that's the thing, and I, it's a good question. But the human hues are just so, they, they cover such a range. I, I mean, the different skin colors that can be, uh, you know, squeezed into just a small range. I mean, I, I can't even say. You raised a good question. What is, what is, no one is really black. I'm looking at a black wallet, and I'm looking at black writing on my, uh, uh, on my map, on my world map, and I've never seen a person that black. And 
So, I mean, I, I think, you know, this is kind of like how many angels can dance on the head of a pen. But what will, uh, you know, catapult us out of this, like I say, extreme superficiality and nonsensicalness is, is having healthy communication. And if women will do that, a woman who's dark-skinned will actually show herself more worthy. I'm not saying, I, I think a person just like a blonde woman, because it reflects light better, you see that person better. I, I mean, that's just a physiological thing. Uh, but uh, let me tell you, black women are attractive. They are beautiful. And like I say, as long as they have the attitude, character, and their weight is, is, is appropriate, I mean, they're no less valuable than light-skinned women. Let, let me ask you this, sir, if you might not, if you don't mind my asking. Do you already have children, offspring? No, I don't. Okay. And are you... Are you at this point? Are you looking to have offspring? Not, not really. I'm, I'm just looking. I, I'm looking for a quality mate, and you can damn sure believe that I'm not just looking for a light-skinned woman. I'm looking for a woman with character and who's attractive and has a nice uh, physique. It didn't matter if she's jet black. I mean, come on. Right, and the reason I was asking is is because I'm wondering how the uh, choices change, per Tater Pie's uh, sort of suggestion, when, well, when, when, it, when you're looking to actually mate, when well, you're thinking about how this, those children you, you are going to come You bring up, again, a very out. salient point. And the point is this. When I was uh, coming up much smaller, uh, it was the women that promoted this thing about color and also hair, good hair, color, and this kind of stuff. And like I say... Women are the ones who promote that. We get our ideas of beauty from our mothers, mostly because that's who, you know, in our formative years, that's who we are around the most. So if women want this madness to stop, then they have to stop it. And if you don't stop it, and especially with mostly uh, mothers raising uh, young boys now, they just absolutely corrupt them. Uh, they, they're basically female in a male body. So they don't know what the hell they want or whom they want it from. So, I mean, we, we need to look at that. This is, this is worthy of being examined and corrected, if you catch my drift. I do. I, I think that you've made some very important points, and uh, we, should, we should definitely come back to them. But we did say we were going to go through the round, so. Well, you're a lady and a scholar. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that, sir. Now, that's true. <laughs> That's a true statement. Okay. Oh, thank you. Okay, so if you're 4644, if you wouldn't mind weighing in on your general age range and, how, and what is dark to you? Well, would I like to be darker than I am? I think that was one of your questions. Yeah, that was the other yeah. question. Mm -hmm. Well, I, in the summertime, I do, <clears throat> when the sun is out, when I'm in the sun, I do get about two shades darker at least a good one shade darker so and i'm my complexion now is about uh just a little bit darker than uh, uh i guess just a little lighter than kuta kente <laughs> between him and uh which and, which uh, kuta kente lou gossett johnny lou gossett. Gossett. Okay. yeah lou gossett just right around, right, I'm about Lou Gossett's complexion. And I go from his complexion to maybe about a, a shade or half a shade darker, depending on the weather. And, uh, you know, I, uh, as far as, I mean, you, you, your conversation is going uh, for personal preferences and what uh, a particular male would like compared to blacks just getting along and talking. I, you can get along and talk with anybody, no matter what. There's a difference between having a, a cordial relationship, or should I say a business relationship, or should I say associate relationship, rather than having something a little bit more closer than that. And when it gets down to being close and intimate, you know, as I said before, my preference would be a dark complexion woman. And that's something I've always have had those desires. 
And, uh, you know, I was taught that uh, through my parents. Uh, you know, we was taught the old saying at the dinner table, don't bring no white girl in my house. Or the father said, don't bring no white males uh, in my house, no white boys in my house. And uh, some of us continue to teach that to our children today. And that's our responsibility and our right to teach our children those things. Now, if they have a different point of view once they become of age, that's a point of view. Uh, you might have heard me say before, when my daughter, her first two choices of the person she wanted to marry, I disapprove of. And the one that she did marry, it was about three months to four months before I told her I think, and think that he would be okay. So uh, those uh, type of ordeals go on in some families. My next wife would be from Ghana. Uh, All very I important had, and interesting, but we still want to know your basic age range, would you, yeah. and would you want to be darker? Oh, I'm over 50, and, and uh, I don't... I do get, as I said before, when I'm in the sun, I do get darker. Um, in the wintertime, in these climates, when you're not in the sun, you tend to lighten up a little bit. And for a woman, what is dark skin to you? Well, I thought I mentioned uh, that already. Dark skin would be like a Wesley Snipes. Okay. See, that, that for me, that's what's, that, that is what is dark to me. Short of Wesley Snipes, you're getting to be, to me, just a regular black person. But I'm. But but it'd be interesting to hear the younger people because I think they will. What is dark to them is much lighter than what is dark to us. So just hold hold on, brother Pian. Yeah, you know, real quick, I have yeah. met some people who are as dark complexion as ink. So they do it. So good. have I. So have I, and they're absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. they are. Sure is. I tell them that too. Mm-hmm. Good for you. Let's go on to. Uh, we'll come back to you. Let's go on to six five two zero and and see what their answers to the questions are. 6520, if you're still there, your mic is open, and we would like to know if you would like to be darker than yourself, than you already are, first. Um, no, I wouldn't want to be darker. Okay, thank you. That was very candid. Uh, the next question is, what is your, I think you're the one who's, who's in your 20s, your 26, I think you said, correct? Yes. And then the last question, which I'm really interested in, is could you name a celebrity that, male or female, just so we know the the, the hue that you would think of as dark skinned, the lightest would, one that you would think of, and you would say, "Hope oh, that person's dark skinned." I would say that uh, Gabrielle Union would be the beginning of what I would classify as dark skin. See what I mean? That's very, yeah. very different. Very different. Right. Uh, when I was twenty six, Gabrielle Union would have been considered just a medium skinned dark, uh, medium skinned. Uh, Black female, it's it's definitely changing, and uh, I'm not sure, I, I guess what we would attribute that to is just more expo- excuse me more exposure to media, more exposure to supposedly black women, but who are much lighter skinned. So there's much more um, visual contact with what you see on television. And since there are more, quote-unquote, black images on TV, you're going to see more of those than you see in your everyday life. Mm-hmm. When I was 26, most of the black people I saw were real black people. <laughs> and most of them were, you know, Gabrielle Union's tone or around that. Most of them were not on TV. So what was medium to me and, when, and what is medium to you or what was dark to me and what is dark to you, they're, they're different. But there's also the issue of all the mixing that has gone on so that we ha- are getting every generation of black people in this hemisphere has gotten lighter. So there's that, too. Mm-hmm. Okay. let's. Uh, I'm going to skip Tater Pie for right now and let her listen to all of the responses and then come back to her. Now, I think this person I'm about to pick up, I don't think this person, I don't think we've heard from this person at all. And this is a person whose last four digits are 9121. Oh, wait a minute. We have heard from him. This is Blacka. Blacka. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, so the question is, would you want to be darker skinned than yourself? That's the first question. Than you are right now. Oh, um, I w- it wouldn't bother me if I was darker than I am now. No, I mean I could be. It wouldn't bother. Me. Should we ask how dark skinned you are now? Um, I think um, 
a little darker than uh, Wesley Snipes. Okay. Ooh. So you would be almost almost dink and wear dark if if you were darker. Okay. The next question is, uh, what is your general age range? Well, I'm 45. Okay. And the last question is, uh, what is the lightest skin color that is dark to you for a black person? Um... Now repeat the question again. What is the lightest skin color that you would label as dark skinned? For a woman, right? For anybody. Okay. The lightest I would say Tay Diggs. Anything anything beyond that I would consider becoming light. Very interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> but you know what? It may not just be about age because I have um, relatives who are in their, well, when they were in their late 20s, told me that um, my husband was light skinned and I laughed. I fell off the chair. Uh, now they're on the darker side, but to me, they were just medium. I guess, but they're Gabrielle Unionish, I suppose, and they and, and I, I almost fell off the chair because to me, my husband is not light skinned at all. Uh, but they said so. You know, there's a couple of things in play here. There's a couple of things. One is age, I think. The other, I think, for the reasons we've talked about before, I think the other is how dark you happen to be yourself. You know, it's it's relative. Um, I think both of those both of those things are at play. There was something else I wanted to say about that. I don't remember that what it is. Media wise in terms of what, what we saw. I mean listen, coming 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 up, um okay, well, Sydney Forty was a little teeny bit before me, but in terms of the contrast, right? Sydney Forty Eight would have been dark, right? Diane Carroll would have been a little bit light. Medium, would you call right? And, medium light, mm-hmm. but right, but only as compared to uh, who? I don't know, Dorothy Dandridge, mm. uh, uh, Lena Horne, that that type. You see what I'm saying? There's less. There's there's less um, today. I think in terms of the media, in terms of what is portrayed, there's less contrast. Particularly amongst the 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 females that are touted as you know the beautiful black women. That's what I wanted to get to, and I and I do want to go ahead and take five three zero one's call. What I wanted to get to was this, and this has been disturbing me for some time. Is uh, when when those of us who are forty and up for most of our existence, um, dark meant unusual un- meant three standard deviations from average right and light meant three standard deviations from average but we didn't say but but our language was richer even about the hue we never described a black person as uh black people as only dark or light those weren't the only two words we used we would say oh, we would at least say they're average or they're medium or they're about the color of there wasn't just this bifurcation, this either or, you're either light or you're dark, which is what I hear now. You're either light or you're dark. It's like a caste system. Either you're light enough or you're not light enough. Mm-hmm. Before, I think we saw the actual optical color range. And, but now it's, it's a total, it seems like it's a total political thing. You're either light enough, which means good enough, or you're not. It's almost like you're so much trash rather than seeing people for the full complexity of they, what they are, including their hue. I'm just wondering if you have any um, feedback on that. Right. So the question, the question, you know, still remains to be answered, um, uh, you know, with us and, and with the call, is what, in, what informs your um, understanding of, of what is attractive? And in terms of fighting this system of white domination, you know, do we feel any type of um, of obligation? I, I don't, I don't, I don't really want to say obligation, but for lack of a better word, do we feel any any kind of obligation to to? 
what do I want to say, Craig? <laughs> to, 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 do to, we, to, we to feel heal? any obligation to make sure that we perpetuate you know the 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 darker of us because we know that that is part of the white domination assault is to 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 have us hating the darker of us and to have us not wanting to perpetuate the darker of us so even with those of us who consider ourselves to be you know, uh, counter races and Afrocentric and nationalist, nationalistic and, you know, all of these other supposedly pro-black um, uh, things, ideologies, are we really thinking about this thing consciously in terms of perpetuating the darker of us? Right, because that really is the bottom line for this program, isn't it? It's uh, because to the degree that we promote that as being beautiful with not just our speech but our behavior, we contribute to dark people vanishing from this planet or continuing to be here. Um, and, and, and even beyond that, we contribute to either wanting to be together mm-hmm. and work together or not. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, we are people, we are a species that is driven by what we find attractive and we, you know, all of the studies show that what you find attractive you tend to also think of as having better character. You tend to also think of as being um, smarter, all of that stuff. So if you're finding visually less attractive what is dark, you are pretty much promoting the only people that you're really going to work with or the people who will be worked with the most and are worth saving are people who look more like the people who are pressing you. And so do you have an obligation that if you recognize that in yourself to submit yourself to some sort of self-therapy, if nothing else, to heal mm-hmm. it? And, you know, can it be done? Um, I don't think that we've taken this call. Last four di- digits are 5301, and I think this is M1. Let's see. Is that you, M1, at 5301? No, that, that's not. How are you, Cree? Oh, great. How are you, new father? How are you? Uh, yes, but I'm well. I'm well. Good evening, LBM. Getting any sleep? Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm trying. It's, it's, it's a process. It's a process, but it's good. It is. So we're having a pretty interesting discussion here this evening. And... um. I am a, I guess if I had to describe myself complexion-wise, I would probably be about the complexion of maybe Lawrence Fishburne. Okay. That's probably how I would best describe my complexion. Now, what I would consider dark or what was considered dark would be... uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the actress, comedian Phyllis Pinkney. Yes. Oh, oh Phyllis. Phyllis Pinkney, yes. Yeah, 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 for sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And she actually looked exactly like my mother, complexion and everything. Mm. Um, so that would be a one. And I'm over 40 as well. Would you want to be darker skinned than you are, very candidly? Candidly, be as, as honest as you can bear. I'd probably like to be about Denzel Brown. Okay. So I, I would say yes. Okay. I would just like to ask you why. I don't know. I, I've, I've always just felt that I would have preferred to have been darker. Growing up in my family... Um, being darker was something that was more celebrated than being lighter. Um, my mother was a darker woman. She was a complexion of Phyllis Pickney. And growing up, she suffered a great deal of um, turmoil from people who were lighter complexion than her. And I think that she internalized it to the degree that... Um, 
she had a deep abiding resentment towards people who were lighter complexion so that when she met my father who was as I said um, probably about one's fish man's complexion he was definitely color struck in the sense that he looked for a woman who was as dark as possible um, she met my father while he was in the nation of Islam so he was looking for the woman, a woman that was as dark as possible. And growing up, he would always say to me, you have to purify your seed, you have to, you know, try to find as dark a woman as possible. So that was something that was instilled in me when I was very young, very young. But um, the first young female that I can remember being attracted to, ironically enough, in the second grade with light-skinned pen Penny with the long hair and, you know, long, straight, straighter hair and light skin. And I think that was probably a, a form of rebellion because my mother was so adamant about not being attracted to light-skinned girls so that most of the years that I grew up, um, I tended to date lighter-skinned girls when I was younger and then, like, mid-teens, I asked a sister, I asked one of my sister friends to introduce me to someone, and she said, oh, you wouldn't like her. And I'm like, well, why? She was like, well, she's dark. And I was like, well, what does that mean? She said, you don't date dark, dark girls. I said, what are you talking about? She said, no, you don't date dark girls. You talk all of this pro-black stuff, but you're a sellout. And I was like, what? <laughs> And mm. she was like, name five dark girls you dated. And I stood there and I was stupefied and it convicted me so much so that after she said that, I made a conscious decision to date all women that were probably about Phyllis Tickney complexion, if not darker. And I went through that for a number of years. And then I just got to the point where I just, basically wanted a woman that just loved being black, whether she was as dark as Phyllis Stickney or, you know, um, as light as Erica Badu, you know, as long as she just had a strong sense of being comfortable being black. Mm -hmm. That's just been my preference. That's that? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I know. Um, I know you do some work with a lot of uh, young brothers. What are you What are you getting from them in terms of what they um, what they feel is is attractive? You know, are, are they are they are they even thinking in 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 terms of you know white white domination in terms of choosing a mate or choosing to even be with with a black woman of any complexion? Actually, a lot of the, and my younger cousin about two months ago, I followed him on Twitter. He, twit he tweeted, you know, he was like, oh, I'm living large, I'm in charge now, now I have to get me a white girl. And I was like, I replied to him like, what? And then a couple of his friends replied, you know, like, yeah, that's the thing to get, like so-and-so and like so-and-so. And I happen to be in a room with them and talking to them and they don't even want Beyonce anymore. They're straight to a white girl. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, let me see what uh, Tater Pie has to say, if any, to what she's she's been hearing because I know we skipped her. So let me go back to her. Thanks for weighing in, S. Dot, and h hang around. Tater Pot, do you have any comments to what you just heard? Um, no, I just appreciate the response. Okay. Um, I wanted to draw some attention to the images that I chose for the episode. Um, that first one was, uh, not the first one, it was the one that uh, was on last week's episode. But it is also in the lineup for this one. And it is the, I call it the template. I've had it hanging out on my hard drive for about four years now. And it is of five young ladies of various skin.
skin hues. They are all would be classified as black in this part of the world. And they go from what would be considered high yellow, you know, back in the day, to <laughs> as close to crystal black as, as as I have seen. And it's a really interesting photo for a number of reasons. One is that it was taken. Uh, and I think I said last week that I would bet my last 50 bottom dollars that that is a photo that was taken by a white man. And why do I say that? Uh, first of all, the willingness of the range of them to get together like that. If this were uh, maybe some sort of uh, gathering of conscious people, I could see them wanting to sort of make that statement. But I'm not that I, you know, I'm making generalizations, but I'm looking at the sort of gathering that it is, the sort of clothing that they're wearing, the hair styles that they have. You've got perms on the head. I don't think that that was the setting. So this is a some sort of a social gathering. Uh, there's something about the demeanor that's coming across on the stills that set me to believing that uh, at least three of these girls come from sort of a suburban sort of uh, uh, setting, which means that they are probably in some sort of social setting that is quote-unquote mixed. And I can't imagine in that setting a black male you know, say let's say it's at a, a a college or university that has mostly white students, that a black male in those environment environs would then go gather up the widest range of uh, of hues in black females that he could and decide to take a picture. That looks like a fetish for color for to me. And that type of fetish usually comes from white males and one more thing. If you really look at the way that the picture is arranged, you can see that the focal point was arranged so that the darkest female is the focal point. She is the one holding the prop. She is the one holding the glass, and they are all leaned in towards her. Her head is more stationary, but everything is leaned in towards this crystal black female, making it clear to me and really making the impression to me that I think I would have had already that what was most stunning to the person who took this picture, who was probably a white male, was this dark-skinned female. I don't think that if anybody else had taken that picture, they wouldn't have, you know, they would have leaned into her. There's one more thing I want to point out about the picture, if you're looking at it. You know, and this kind of goes to some of the other things that I said about, let's be very observant and let's be looking for, uh, excuse me with that, uh, let's be uh, very observant so that we can uh, start devising some science that would be helpful for us. If you will search for this photo online in Google videos, and I've, I've forgotten the search term I put in. I think I put in, I'm not really sure what the search term was. It might have been black females. Um, but if you look at the original photo, and I'll try to get one that's more faithful put up, what you will see is that the only person with red eye in the in the photo is the very lightest female. She has red eye. It has something to do with uh, electromagnetic frequency, the ability to absorb light, something like that. But be thinking about that, and I won't say anything more than that. Probably just the last thing is that the darkest female, she does look like she's Dinka, and as if she, um, her hair is just very, very short. It doesn't look like it. From what I've seen, many, many, many of the women from that ethnicity, um, and it's not necessarily related to the darkness of her skin, but just that particular tribe, their uh, hair tends not to grow uh, very long at all. Um, and I guess, you know, there's sort of a question if she's, uh, you know, if you if you had to choose between a woman that dark, this is before all the males on the line, a woman that dark, and all of them look like they, you know, have appropriate weights, uh, just looking at the, the upper torso of them all, the darkest one, she looks like she's very sort of sinewy. Um, but that doesn't, I don't know how shapely she is, what have you. Mm -hmm. um, but the darkest one, uh, if if she had naturally long, straight hair of the type that you said you found spooky, uh, LBM, like be mm -hmm. really dark, really dark. So I would like to ask the males, if she had long, straight hair, or if you took that, the very lightest one, and made her hair as short as the darkest one is now, and, and th that's all the choice they had, that uh, guns to your head, this is your mate for life, which one would you choose? That's the question. Oh, the hands went down. 
Uh, that's the question. So let's uh, <laughs> let's go back around and see if we can get answers. I, I don't think the first caller wants to answer that question because he wants to talk about how we don't communicate, and that's that is an interesting discussion that I want to have. But right now, I would like to get that question answered. So I'm opening your mic, sir. You're on. Are you talking to me? I am, sir. I'm sorry. Please, re <clears throat> what was the question? Uh, are you on the episode? Can he see? Right. Can he see the picture? Can you see the picture? Are you in, on the episode page by any chance? Indeed. I saw them earlier. Uh, what about them? You, you see the very darkest young lady? Yes. And you see how short her hair is? Uh, yes, I saw that. Okay. What The question is, let's suppose we transfer form her into the same hue but with naturally long straight hair and then let's take the very lightest one and transform form her into the same hue but with very very short hair as short as the dark one is now the very very short natural hair which one if being as honest as you can bear to be which one would you choose to date if you only had to choose between those two oh um Oh, darn. Well, you're saying just looks. I haven't talked to to them or anything. Just we looks. Haven't just had looks. Any... Let's say huh? all other things all other things are equal, personalities are equal, accomplishments are equal, emotional availability is equal. Now it just comes down to looks. Which do you choose? Oh, damn. Let, let me just say may I answer that? I mean, because see, you you've put me in a in a dilemma. You've put me in I a I know, but I'm gonna put all the callers in that same dilemma. Yeah, but see, they could be, when I talk to them, understand a man in my position is concerned about a woman who will be supportive and a woman who is, is, is there for him uh, for him, and not just what she can get. She's not a parasite. She, she's a symbiont. She's symbiotic, in other words. So they could be equally bad. They could have equally bad character. And I'm answering as candidly as I can. And I'm just saying, not knowing them, just looking at their physiognomy or their outer appearance, um, I, I can't, I can't really judge. But I do know that hair on a woman is considered a long hair on her head, not a beard, is considered. A <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the funny. Is, is considered a more attractive. But I think we do need to acknowledge that properties of attraction are associated with females, although now females are, are, are looking at us uh, as, as sort of like metrosexuals or she-males. So now they're judging us by how pretty we are, which is a real issue. But that's the way I would answer that. I, I would have to talk to the women to know if either were desirable because they could be equally undesirable regardless as to how they look, if that makes sense. Um, I would like to ask, did you hear what the 26-year-old um, 20, young man uh, said? I, I heard him. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. N not the last thing he said. Well, what did he say? Okay, the, the, the question being, which one would you even approach oh, okay. to find out? whether or not he's saying that certain sisters of a certain complexion are not even going to be approached. Yeah, let so me say this. Even, may I comment not, about the, him? Because, well, about his, not, not about him. But see, I, I, he obviously is, is a little bit younger, not that much younger. Because remember, we've been 26 too. But the thing of it is, I think he takes an extreme view and I, I'm not sure if he has a woman or if he likes a woman for a woman. It just may be the superficial thing. But because we don't uh, have anything to value each other for other than the superficial, that's why we gravitate to this, and that's why we depreciate and devalue each other the way we do is because we don't provide each other with anything. I guarantee you if we provided each other with some sort of uh, sustenance, uh, we would treat each other differently because we would value each other. And I wrote a treatise on actually why black men, if I may say so, why black men should uh, avoid female tyranny and not date American black women 
because American black women are supported by the white system, welfare, corporate jobs, and government jobs. So they don't value black men, and thus they don't communicate with us on, a, on an equitable and intelligent basis. So I say just tell them why you're not dating them. Make sure you tell them and then date women of other ethnic groups because any child that a black man has with other women is still black. So a woman who doesn't mean you anything and who doesn't allow you peace is of no value to you anyway. It's like uh, trying to ride a dead horse. Thank you for that. I'm going to let uh, LBM respond to that because I am certain you have a response, lady. Oh, and where, where, where would where would you be looking? The, first of all, if you if if you're making that general statement about uh, African so-called African American women, why do you think that's the case? Uh, did you are you speaking to me still? Yes, sir. Yeah, well, I explain why that's the case, because, see, the hand that feeds you is, is the hand that you generally have allegiance to. Uh, so since black folks spend all their money with other people, and the money they have, they get it from the white system, because virtually, uh, you know, I even say there are no black grocery stores, no well-stocked black grocery stores. And that's not true for any other group. So black women, regardless as to how they complain about black men, and they produce the black men, by the way, in whatever form the black men come, but they complain about black men because they don't value black men. The value, the non-valuing comes from the woman. She starts the non-valuing. Okay, we don't want to we don't want to stray too far off of off of what our focus well, is. Well, okay, fine, but, but that's, I would. Right, I, I but that's like why that, that that's the reason because she doesn't value the man because th there's no uh, th there's nothing supplied her. She doesn't work for him. She doesn't buy anything from him. So it's easy for her to depreciate him. Okay, I need. To, I, I'm sorry. I need to do a station yeah. ID. This is the Counter Racist Evolving Engineer Program. This evening we're talking about our issue of colorism being color struck and how that affects our dating and mating selections. There are only eight and a half minutes left in the live stream. If you want to continue listening in the last hour of the program, you will need to dial in, and that, that number is 347-633-9734. Again, 347-633-9734. LBM? So, um, Carla, are you saying that black women are more victimized by this system of white domination than than black males are. Sorry, say again. Are you saying that because you you're stating these things that are that are wrong with black women here in 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 America under this system? So I'm asking you, are you saying that black American females are more victimized by the system of white domination than black males are? Absolutely not. Uh, they're less victimized, but they're more self-victimized. No, the, the, freest, the two freest agents there are in America are the white man and the black woman. They are the freest. And so what, all you have to do is notice the willingness and or unwillingness willingness of the black woman to just talk with the black man. I'm talking about 21st century free women. Will they even talk to the man? Hi, how are you? You know, let's go to the park. They don't do that. And that's where everything starts. That's the, that's the genesis of, of any good relationship is the communication right there. And black women, for the most part, not all, but about 85 to 90 percent, they refuse to have a conversation w with black men. You know what I but, think? I, I think it may be a little bit counterintuitive, but I think that the person who would have the best Response to that will be the young lady if she's willing to weigh in. Uh, I'm going to see if Tater Pie is willing to lay, weigh in on this issue. Now, if I can remember which block number she is, I think she's this one. Tater Pie, are you there? Hello. Yes, Tater Pie. Have you been listening at all? Did you uh, Did you hear that last? I missed uh, the last. Bit. Could you um, do a summary oh. for me, please? I will do my I will do my best. 
uh, the the caller said that he believes that the freest people uh, in this country are white males and black females, and that you could tell that black females were the way you could gauge how free we are is by our complete lack of willingness to talk to black males in a cordial manner to be able to greet black males in a you know cordial and civil manner and you know open up dialogue uh and that uh it's a wrap for black females in this part of the world because we are so dependent upon um non-black people in our jobs or welfare of some sort government corporate or you know non-working at all that um we just have no ability or willingness to work with black males at all i was wondering if you had a response to that i don't we get confused about the free part um when it comes to the depending on my black people that's a black males as well so that's, um, that's, yeah. um i don't what did you explain what you meant by earth ethnicity does that include non-black females yeah, let's go ahead and ask him. His mic is open. Sir, when you said other ethnicities, could you tell us what you mean, meant by that? Yeah, in every group there are overflow of women, and there are women who like black men, in the Asian, in the um, Hispanic, in the white. I mean, there are women who just like men, and if they find a black... All I'm saying is is that if a black man... Uh, you know, is able to relate to one of these other women, and he's and I'm talking about black men in the fifty thousand and above income range, and the ones who aspire to be there, uh, because these are the men who want peace. If if they have a woman that likes them and wants to connect with them, who's in another ethnicity, uh, don't wait on a black woman because the, the black American woman, and I want to make sure I, I specify that, the black Mer- American woman is not coming. Seventy-two percent of them, by their own admission, are single, and it basically has to do with attitude, personality, uh, character, and, of course, weight. It's it's one or more of those particular attributes that is ca- causing them to remain single. So they're very hostile and bellicose wow. toward wow. Co- communicating with the black man. So why I didn't do want you want to? Okay, let me, I did not want to well, go. I did not want to okay. go there. So let's let, let's let Tater Pie respond. I wouldn't promote that at all. I think that's hogwash. Um, when it comes to non-black females, they do not know what black males go through. They cannot relate to that. I, I'm a person who considers a black female, but I can't also pass as non-black. So I know from personal experience that I think that black males go through, I do not go through. I, the reason why I understand black males better is because I chose to understand them. I chose to seek that information out. If I would have been ignorant and just decided that, hey, I'm going to be non-black, I'm not going to do this whole black thing, then I wouldn't have, it would have been way over my head. I would have noticed that black people are are mistreated and I wouldn't, wouldn't want to be a part of it. That's all I would have been at. So this whole thing about, that's just bull crap. That, that's that's bull crap. And in the end, I would not promote that at all. Which is why my whole skin change, you know what, this is why I promote the black males, well, black, dark black people and basically pick out people of their own shade because it will go way over my head. I already know that I'm not confident enough to raise a dark black child because I just would not understand the existence they go through. I would not know very well. That was very upsetting. Thanks for that. LBM, did you? Go ahead. Yeah, I I wanted to ask the caller um, this. Um, If if you if you you know if if we're going to go along with with that statistic statistic that seventy percent of black women are single, and you're saying by choice, um, even if we want to go with that statistic that 70% of black women are single, 
70 percent of black women are not childless. So most of these women who are uh, statistically single have children by black men. So what happened between them being attractive enough to be slept with to produce these children and being married to? Oh, that's a slam dunk. I mean, white men would have sex with black women, but they didn't want them as wives. So many men will, you know, have sex with women. If you look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, I mean, sex is, you know, it's it's a basic urge. So they'll have sex with women that they don't want to be with. And by the way, the women are having sex with them, too. Women are actually more sexual than men. But the women just tend to be irresponsible because the government will take take up, uh, will take the woman's cause up legally, uh, to make a man pay, as it were, if they can get money out of them, out of him. And so these these are the things that the woman already knows. Because how many black women that go on Maury and so on and so forth will say, "I'll put you on child support." See, they know that they can work the system and that the system will support them. But overall, it destroys the black community. Let me let me just uh, weigh in here with a few things. Um, I try as, as best I can, probably just because of my quantitative background, um, you know, uh, studying engineering. So I try as best I can to be evidence based. So I'll have a point of view, but I will look for the evidence. And uh, a couple of things that I found evidence for. Uh, yes. There are a high, there's a high proportion of black females who are not married, but the percentage of black females who are not married only slightly exceeds the percentage of black males who are not married. Neither of us are married. We're not married to each other. We're not getting married. Um, secondly, the issue of, while the issue of having too much adipose tissue, that means being too fat, uh, is certainly an issue of attractiveness for everyone regardless of gender and regardless of skin hue, it is uh, not correct, it is actually false, that black females are fatter than other ethnicities. And I know that that shocks and, and amazes people, and they think that I'm lying because they think that, hey, just go outside or go to any Walmart and that will prove the point. But that, in fact, it's not the truth. The fattest women in this country are Hispanic women, uh, significantly, uh, the ob obesity and overweight rates for black females and white women are uh, comparable. There's no statistical difference. I think that the statistical difference is in the imagery. The number of fat black women that you will see on television, which is most of the images that people see of black women, far exceed the women of appropriate black women of appropriate weight on television, and vice versa. The number of appropriately weight white women on TV far exceeds the number of fat ones and it is disproportionate. That is to say that there are far, there's a far greater percentage of slimmer white women on TV than there are actually in real life and vice versa. Uh, if you go on my blog, I think it is under uh, the blog post entitled The Help, there's a link where you can see the um, the medical uh, uh, validation for what I'm saying. Uh, black, white scientists, and of course, if you Google it, all you will see is pages and pages and pages to the contrary. You will see pages and pages that say that black women are the fattest women. The CDC says that. The uh, NIH says that. But in fact, they're using a measure that gives a false reading, and uh, that's been validated many times now. The body mass index uh, is biased towards it's biased against black women because black women have denser muscle tissues and heavier bones. But when you use uh, something like um, a caliper test or water um, density test, uh, that's that's actually more accurate for everyone. And then it changes over. Uh, Hispanic women are far far fatter, and wh and black and white women are comparable. Uh, and it is you know we're not getting married now. Marriage is a is a business. You have to have capital to be married, and. Uh, you know, uh, black women seem to be all the ones that I know, and I think LBM can speak to this. It's generally the other way around. It's uh, usually the black female is uh, more than willing to uh, to try to cohabitate and make a family un unit with a black male who 
uh, makes whatever amount of money. Uh, and usually she ends up supporting him more times than he ever supports her. Um, it's not a symbiosis. Usually it's the black man who, um, unfortunately, because he has is afforded far less opportunities to make money, is in a, an unfortunate position of having to depend on the black female. Um, and I guess that's all I, I would have to say about that. I, I have I have another question, and I, I'm really um, I'm, I'm really a little distressed that you even had to to say what you just had to say because it it's it presupposes the the idea that those black men who do uh, date uh, non black women that all of these other women that that they date or marry or somehow slim, attractive, uh, you know, you know, ideal uh, feminine bodies of women. And that, I, I would like to ask the caller, is that really what he's seen? Well, you know what, wait, 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 wait. Let's, come, let's get his answer to that in a minute because we have a number of hands up and there was... Uh, there were some questions that we never got answered, and they were. What were the questions? I forgot. Oh my God! Age? Would you would you mind being darker than you are? Your general age range, and what do you consider dark? I think we got all those answered. I think there was one more, wasn't there? Uh, there was one that I just posed. Um, I've forgotten. Okay, never mind. If I, if it comes back to me, it'll come back to me. Is S dot still on the line? Um, I, I think he is. I'm not sure which one of these he is, though. Uh, there's because there's, uh, there's a number of same area code. Let me see. Uh, gosh, which one is he? Let's try this one. Let's see if this is S dot here. S dot, is this you? Or is this no? Can this is Emily. Yes, we can hear you. S dot. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Right. In terms of the focus of our um, conversation tonight, I have a question for you. I wonder if you could okay. give this a quick thought. Um, the movie Precious. Mm-hmm. Oh, hold on. I'm going to forget. I'm going to forget. This is so non-professional. I, unprofessional. I know, but I knew that I was going to forget. <laughs> I, I know, and I've, we got, we've got him on the line. Here's the question. If you had to choose between a very, very, very dark-skinned female, like the one on the picture, the darkest one, with long, straight hair, with as much honesty as we can bear, or a, a light-skinned female, like the lightest one in the picture, with very, very short, short, nappy hair, and that's all you had to go on, which one would you choose to date, knowing that you're a happily married man? But let's put you in a different dimension. You're not, you know, you don't ever remember being married and having any kids. It's the same as thought okay. today. Which one do you choose? Now, the dark-skinned woman with the long hair, was that long processed hair? No, naturally straight long hair. Oh, I think I would more than likely go for the light skin one with the shorter haircut. Interesting. Okay. Now I'm sorry. Now and that we got reason, that. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, would like another reason. Well, I would. I'm sorry. Being, I would like another reason. <laughs> the reason being that I would think that she made a conscious decision to go against the grain to embrace having shorter hair, kinkier hair. So I would probably think that she would probably be more inclined to be more uh, affirmative about being black. That doesn't necessarily mean because a person is dark-skinned and has naturally long hair that that person isn't affirmative about being black. But um, my experience with my mother, who was a dark-skinned woman, who had long, natural hair, was that she constantly faced a lot of backlash from having long hair. A lot of people would always ask her was her hair uh, chemically treated or altered or things of these natures. And as a result of it, I think it built up a great deal of hostility in her. So I, I think that the light light skin or lighter skin person with the shorter, kinkier hair for me would seem more like someone who was 
more trying to be in touch with who she was as a black woman as opposed to the other one for me. Okay. And LBM, I know that I, I somehow broke your flow. If you could do something that I didn't do, which is to write down what it was that you were going to say, I wanted to make sure that I gave the two people whose hands are remaining because a lot of hands went down with that question, which is interesting. Okay. Let's see if I can get these two answers. answers. If you are the caller whose last four digits are 4672, what would be your choice? Extremely dark skin with naturally long straight hair or very light skinned with short snappy hair? Forty six seventy two, are you still there? Oh yes, I'm here. Oh, this Hello? is a female. Oh, this is a female. Hi. Hey, this is baby anime. I'm so sorry. I you called earlier? I did and I'm so sorry. <laughs> I I am so 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 sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I heard you on the phone. I tried to see. I I just wanted to you know, it's like I get a little nervous talking on the phone, but I heard what he, um, the gentleman was saying before, and I wanted to come in and give my piece on that. Um, um, one, of, one of the things is that um, is, I don't know if anybody ever heard of Frances M. Beale. No. She wrote a, a paper back in 1969 where she actually spoke about exactly what the gentleman was saying about... Um, the, he actually made a statement that black women and white males were the freest members in society. Hmm. Is that a statement he made earlier? He did. That's what he said. Right. And one of the things that is that, you know, the entire, you know, she wrote a paper where she actually explained that the, the entire economy, this economy that we're in right now, this capitalist economy was built by the white man. It was built by him, and he knew exactly what he was doing when he built it. He built it in a way so that he could economically exploit people of color. That's what he built it. And, and he built it around, you know, it created certain psychological problems for both black men and black women, one of which is that we have certain idea, you know, ideals of what success means for the black man and you know, for the black man, in order for him to 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 um, sort of like compete within this same capitalist society, he has to build a certain kind of image that that uh, you know the, you know the Cadillac man image. And let me just read something to you, just just real quickly. I don't want to take up it. This is what she wrote. She said, "Certain black men are retained," and this is written in 1969. Certain black men are maintaining that they have been castrated by society, but that the black woman somehow escaped the, prosecu the same prosecution and even contributed to his emasculation. She says, let me state here that not that the black woman in America can justly be described as a slave of a slave, okay, because somehow we've gotten in a, into a position with the black men where we're, see, we seem to always have apologizing for what it is that who we are and what we're doing here. We're begging to be accepted, you know, by the black man when, in fact, we're in the same oppressive situation by reducing the black man in America to such abject oppression, meaning the capitalist society that we live in right now. The black woman had no protection and was used and is still being used in some cases as the scapegoat for the evils that this horrendous system has perpetuated on the black man. Her physical image, which you were stating earlier, has been maliciously maligned and she has been sexually molested and abused by the white colonizer. She has suffered the worst kind of economic exploitation. Because, we're, you know, it's like many of us have to be the breadwinner in our families, having to be forced to serve as the white man's maid wet nurse for his white offsprings while her own children were more often than not starving and neglected during slavery. All of this is, is still continuing. This same degradation that has happened to us during slavery is still happening to us. We haven't healed from any of this. This is still going on in our mind. We're being socially manipulated.
manipulated, physically raped all over again and again, and used to undermine our own homes, you know, as black women. And, and, and it's like many black men are unable to see it. And it's a, it's a you know, it's a, a cycle that it's continuously perpetuating itself, you know, because we don't want to see that this is, this is something that, happening from years and years and years. It's like we've inherited this sickness and many of the, many of our black men cannot see what's going on. That's why he can make such a statement, you know, that the black woman somehow is you know, that we're in cahoots with the with the white men. I'm going to open his line up and let him respond to that. Uh I, I will let my bias be known that I I concur with you. But I will let him make his case. He's quite able, uh, if he's willing. Well, sir, you, um, LBM, I'm sorry. Did I did I cut you off? Yeah, I wanted to ask um, um, Ivy. Yeah. Ivy. Hi, yes. this is LBM. Um, when when Francis M. Beale made that statement, what was is that a him or her? It's a she. It's a it's a it's a, it's a woman. Okay. Okay, what 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 do you think her definition of free was? Because I'm I'm confused. Her definition of being free. She right. wanted when, to when, point out that under this system, this system of capitalism, black men and women are being degraded and oppressed. She wanted to point out that we're being used, and we have we it, it's it's a system that was built. And to support the white man only. It's not a system to, you know, where he's saying that black women and white men are the only free members in society. This is not freedom. Where does he see freedom? What does he, what is his definition of freedom? Freedom is being, being continuously raped and maligned. You know, our images, you know, is being destroyed constantly in the eyes of our children over and over and over again. It's almost as if the rape is continuing. Right. It's absolutely continuing. Um, and I I do want to call this definition of free. I was just, I thought you were saying that this person, Francis M. Bill, said the same thing, that white males and, and black females no, he, were the free. He actually pointed out that that's what... A, she was that refuting that. Bill to destroy, to put, drive a wedge between our relationship. This is something that was designed. It was by design that black men would think like this, would would come to this type of conclusion. Right. Okay. Well, like, okay. You know. I understand. So, do we want the uh, the caller's definition of free? Yes, please. Okay. Would you mind giving us your definition of free, sir? Oh, sure, sure. Well, first of all, you're an engineer. So am I, electrical, non-destructive testing. Uh, and the thing is, is that um, freedom refers to economic and political viability. Uh, number one, having uh, the money to the economic empowerment uh, to navigate your society. Uh, because it doesn't mean a damn thing to have freedoms uh, the freedom to buy a pork chop, as it were, and no money to buy a pork chop. So ultimately, freedom in America, in a capitalistic society, has a great deal to do with uh, your possession of money, both personally and your group's possession of money. And that's why slavery was basically an economic endeavor. That's primarily and foremost what it was the most brutal in the history of, the, of mankind, the peculiar institution, but nevertheless an economically oriented institution. Look, I can't help, no uh, observer could help but draw the analogy that I have or the conclusion, and that is if you look at uh, how the lack of businesses in the black community, and then if you look at the black woman's unwillingness to talk to black men, Look at that clip out of Atlanta called the, um, uh, you know, why successful black women are not married. And she went, if I don't like the way, if I'm not attracted to you, I won't talk to you. 
black women are withholding communication. You can't get anywhere as human beings unless you agree to communicate. And if you guys just go out or ask your girlfriends, 21st century free women, as it were, do they initiate conversation with men? Are they friendly with men? Are they social with men, especially those that are single? And I guarantee you, if you watch them and listen to their answers, you'll see that they are more of a repellent uh, than anything else of men. If men approach them, they reject the men. They look like they've been weaned on on, on a limit. Uh, they don't approach men, and they don't refer men uh, to other women. They're jealous. So if you look at the three ways that people meet, and a certain group is practicing all of those badly, no wonder they end up with the highest rate of singleness. So, you know, we, we have to be real, and most of us are not. We don't have real conversations about fundamental uh, aspects of communication, as we're doing right here. So basically, that's what, that's what the answer of freedom is. Freedom is always tied to economic viability. They're inextricably, inextricably linked, uh, and um, they're practically linked. And so, so that's it. And black women need to be honest about their behavior. Now, some are. i I, I got to give credit. A few black women are honest about their dating practices. But many are so entitlement-driven that unless a man does these huge Herculean feats, they won't even talk to him, and that's just ridiculous. So though those are just some, uh, I think, accurate observations as to why we find ourselves right where we are. Well, thank you. Response? Um, yeah, can I ask the um, caller where he lives? All over America. No, I, I, I live... <laughs> I live in L.A., but it doesn't matter where okay. I live. It's it's pretty much the same thing everywhere you go. I mean, the divorce rate is national. Um, okay, well, well, first, well, you have to be married first before you can be divorced, and so a lot of us are males as well as females are not even getting married. Okay, but right, I right. only ask a question because. I'm here in New York where we have uh upwards of fifty percent of the of the black males um unemployed. And yet, at least down here on the ground where I am, I don't see that upwards of fifty percent of black males are without uh black female com companionship on, on some level or support on on some level. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? Well, no, uh, explain it a little bit further. Um, the statistics may be saying that that black women are single, meaning they are not married, but that doesn't mean that they are not in some way hitched to a, a black man. And what I'm saying is in terms of what I'm seeing, I'm seeing um, quite a few black women on the trains, on the buses, in the mornings, going to work, leaving a, a black man laying in their bed. So to say that black women are not um, with black men because of uh, the, the economic status of the male, I'm just not seeing that. Let me, let me um, intervene a little bit here and say, uh, one of the most memorable guests I've ever had on this program was uh, the creator of the blog, very popular blog, entitled Stuff Black People Don't Like, and though he doesn't explicitly say that he's a racist, if he would, you know, if you read 4% of what's on that blog, uh, it matches anything that you would see on Stormfront or VNN. And one of the things he said on the program, and also says on his blog constantly, is that uh, the condition that black people find themselves in is entirely of our making. So black people are more in prison because we are more, have are more of a propensity towards crime. Uh, black people are uh, sicker because we have more of a, because we're stupid and we have a propensity to do things that are unhealthy, to have unhealthy lifestyles. Uh, that uh, black uh, 
people can't get jobs because we're lazy. We don't have jobs because we're lazy and or we're just not employable because we just can't learn. All of the horrible circumstances that black people tend to find them or, or find ourselves in is because of our own deficits, that there's some defect in us, that the reason that black uh, women have no money, that we have a, a net worth of uh, a $5, uh, is because we're spendthrift and because we uh, are, are lazy. And so then when you look at the, you know, obviously I think all of us would agree that these are these things are not true. The reasons we are in the position that we're in is because we are subject to a very brutal system that mistreats us on the basis of color or factors associated with color. So that if you look at the sorry circumstances that black males and black females find themselves in, it would be the same thing. We, it, it, uh, uh, but of course, it's much easier when you happen to not be in, in that subset of black people to join in on the bashing. While we, you know, we can say that as a group, we're not lazier, we're not more spendthrift, we are not, That's uh, right. it, we're not any more proof to criminality, etc. But if you mm -hmm. say to a black male, well, the reason black females can't get married is because of their nasty, stank attitudes, which you'll find every place, and because they're too fat. Or you say to a black female, the reason that uh, you can't find a black male who makes any money is because he's lazy. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to take uh, a job. He wants to live off of you. It's easier to say yeah when that's not you, even in that black uh, uh, bowl, than to say no. The reason the black male's in the situation he's in is because he's a victim of racism and white supremacy, and the reason the black female's in the position she's in is because she's a victim of she's racism and white supremacy. That's right. right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Is is my mic open? Because I, I have a, you know, being an engineer, I, I like to test things. I, I have to test things. Uh, is Your my mic open. open? It is. Yes, sir. Right. What, I would, it, it, what I would advise people to do is bring some black men and women together, which may be a feat in and of itself, but provide food and music so you may be successful. But bring them together. <laughs> And uh, there's what's called the Black uh, Marriage Negotiations. It's philosophy, and it's the original. But bring them to the table and see if you can get them to discuss openly and honestly relationships. I know we're doing it in cyberspace now, and that's fine. But we don't live in cyberspace. We live in real time and space. Most of us don't see how we act in our natural habitat. So I'm just suggesting that you bring some men. Now, a bunch of men have said, including myself, you could put ten men in front of the average black woman, so-called single successful woman, ten quality men that meet all the characteristics that she says she wants, and she won't be attracted to any of them. Why is that? Why is that? Why do you think that... that I don't even know that that's the case. I don't, no, even, I don't, yeah. I don't think that's the I mean, case, but I'm asking him why. That is the case. Said. Trust me. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> that's the case because, look, you've got to realize of all the – see, we still approach you all. We do something. You all will sit back and talk and hypothesize about life as you would like it to be. But when we are approaching you all and trying to get a conversation uh, commenced with you, that's real. What you do is not real. Exercising veto power is, is, is polar opposite from original choice power. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did I okay. say something bad? Well, <laughs> not bad. I think maybe a little misleading, which is wow. that, Males and females have veto power. Females have veto powers on the back end. Males have veto power on the front end. That well, is, what, explain that, please. Right. A male can veto the selection of a female simply by not approaching her. There's a whole swath of females that you have not approached uh, who, are, who are deselected by virtue of the fact that you have not even approached her. And so you've exercised, the male has exercised veto power on those that he has not even approached right there. Because we have to wait to be approached before we can turn you down. Why well, do you have to wait to be approached? That's the whole point. You don't well, have I, to wait I, to I, be I, approached. You well, can I, approach. You have legs that move. But even, well, it, it holds either way. 
Okay, it holds either way. Let me explain to you why we why why it is a tradition, pretty much all over the planet. Why it is a practice for females to be pursued rather than to pursue, because a relationship will not have legs if the male is not strongly attracted to her, and the only way to test that is for him to pursue. Sure, he will you know he will he he will engage in one sexual encounter or a few. But as far as being motivated to stick with her and provide for her, if he's not strongly attracted to her enough to, you know, jump through some hoops, he's not going to stick around for the pregnancy. That's just evolution. So right, that's- let, me, let me answer that. First of all, that that is patently, with all due respect, that's not true. Because, see, you're putting the uh, emphasis on the symboli- symbolism as opposed to the substance. The substance is the communication that they have and it has to do with the values and the role designations that they agree upon, not the approach. It's at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if the woman approaches the man. Uh, once they have the conversation, that's where they determine values. So what happens, and I understand precisely what you're saying, we're in the 21st century now where over half the workforce are women. And the major demarcation historically in America between men and women was the uh, that went, men worked and brought in the money. That's no longer the case. It so is the, the case. point of it is it we is have to move case. into the era. It is the case. It is the case. The the reason because we all know that black people of either gender are not getting paid more than white people of either, either gender. But the reason that the Department of Labor, the Bureau of uh, Labor and Statistics, will say that uh, the last time they took statistics was that black females made more money than white females isn't because we're getting paid a higher wage than Miss Ann. The reason that we're making slightly more money is that we're working twice the hours. Mm-hmm. Most you, I'm, white I'm women. Sorry, you're missing my point. Right. If I may. No, no, so hang on. My, my my, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Just... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Most white women of childbearing age are home with those, uh, I'm sorry, of, with child, young children at home, are at home with those children. They're working part-time because raising children when they're very young is very labor-intensive, and the preference has been and still is even in the most industrialized countries for the female to stay home and take care of those babies because it's tiring to do both. And so that sort of, that evolutionary uh, sort of pull to have extra support when you're pregnant and with young is still in there in in us for a reason. But we're still Beulah, toting the toting the bag and pulling and and pulling the uh, the wagon, going to work every day and taking care of the babies too. Well, we, we're like any other female. We don't want to do that. Okay. Well, well, if but, men are telling you that they want you to help. Uh, uh, you know, move the communication, get the communication started. There's nothing wrong with your doing that because that's part of the communication. And oftentimes in relationship discussions, you never hear what the men want. Now, the men often say, well, if the woman is just open to my approach. Well, they're not even getting that. And, And so I'm just saying as adults, We have to decide, first of all, to listen to each other and try to comply at least what's reasonable. So what I'm saying is is that 21st century women should be mutually interested, show mutual interest and uh, mutual pursuit with respect to uh, opening communication with with the strange man because that's whom we ultimately date and marry are strangers. So that's all I'm saying. Somebody, uh, I, uh, somebody's got, wait a minute, I'm sorry. Somebody's got some sort of noise going on in the background. Go ahead, LBM. I, I need to I need to be really clear about what you're saying. Are you saying that there's a a significant number of um, uh, employed or otherwise economically viable black males out here that are approaching black women and being rejected? Is that what you're saying? Absolutely, sure. Because the black woman. Okay, so do, okay, I'm I'm sorry. So yes, yes. So the answer to you your saying, question is yes. Okay, so you're saying that the these unemployment statistics for black men across this nation that's though is just not true. 
Well, according to the Department of Labor, no, 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 I'm not saying that. I'm saying according to the Department of Labor, we still out-earn, black men out-earn black women by one standard deviation. Uh, so the thing of it, that is 85% to 15%. So we still out-earn you because, remember, uh, even though you may have a highfalutin education and may be an administrator, uh, men work in jobs such as uh, plumbers, electricians, you know, bus drivers, truck drivers. So men can still make uh, very good money. And I often talk about the James Evans factor and just using him as a metaphor, a hardworking man, a loving man, devoted man. Women tend not to want men like that. There's an article that I have that I would love to send it to you. It's called Love Lessons, Decoding the Desire for the Bad Boy by Natasha Burton. And you have behavioral scientists, anthropological scientists, and what have you that weigh in on it. Women have big egos. Remember, they're human too. And often a woman won't find a man attractive who wants to be with her. She wants the guy who is aloof, the bad boy type. And you've got to understand, we often don't, really discuss issues like this so that we so that we come to any viable conclusions so now, women have to be part of the problem they're percent of the um of the population so they ha and, and we have to know and i'm a troubleshooter by the way i'm a relationship troubleshooter so i say to women all the time just talk to men that's not going to cost you anything you're just having a conversation if the guy's a jerk You'll see it, and that'll be that. It's Speaking of conversation, adjust. Speaking of conversation, this is a fascinating one. And I'm, but I'm torn because I'm also tortured by the fact that we struggled really hard to talk about a very difficult uh, uh, topic, which is the preference that uh, black males have for lighter-skinned females and the preference that we may even have for ourselves for not being darker-skinned, and we've managed to get off of it. And on a very fascinating topic, but we're not on that topic. Well, let me and let me just so, feel right wait. back because it's the same. It, it's actually one in the same topic. If you all will talk to us, take the all the dark skinned women. Let's just do a, a, an experiment. All the dark skinned women, start talking to men. Start being social, and see if your relationship paradigm doesn't change immediately. Just do that. Let let let, let me pose something to you. As someone who is not light skinned, and but I don't have a dark skin complex either. But and so here we go. <laughs> here we go. I'm, I'm going to ask for your empathy. So okay. I'm not going to even call you sir because <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to. Okay. Uh, this is the merit lady, right? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Somewhere between oh seven and 12, 7 and 13, the pretty little black girl approaches the little black boy to share a cupcake, to give him cuts in line to get a drink of water, to share crayons, to invite to the dance after school. And he may talk to her a little bit at recess. But when it gets real social and the little light-skinned girls come around or he has the, opp the opportunity to dance with the little light-skinned girls at, at, at the dance, she gets kicked to the curb. And this doesn't just happen once. It happens throughout her childhood, all, all through high school. And now you're expecting this female who has had made clear to her for the first 20 years of her life that she is not preferred that she will be used and abused for, as a sexual toilet you're asking her now to be open to the good intentions of black males is that reasonable all right let, let me let me give you another scenario and I, I'll, I'll i'll raise you one same scenario that you just gave uh when that little uh now female uh post adolescence she gets her secondary sex characteristics now she can date up. She can date the guy that's four years older than her. And she dumps the young guy 
who doesn't have a car and maybe doesn't have money for the older guy where she can get trinkets. So, I mean, we, we, can, we, we can go on that way. But what I'm saying, stop the war, because we are adults now. And a, a woman can certainly say hi to a man and be social. Hell, if she wants to have a relationship with him, she's got to do that anyway. So I'm just saying increase your opportunity for communication. If you think communication is important, then you start it and then see where it leads. That's a reasonable request. It, it I'm a reasonable, reasonable person. And, and, excuse me? Yes, please. Please, please I'm um, sorry. One of the things also, you know, and I'm just going to go back to your story. I don't mean to not acknowledge what you just said, um, mister. But I just want to go back to your story and also to, to add to that, that, this is something that continues not only as a young girl, it continues throughout your adolescence. And it becomes even, you know, more poignant. It becomes even more vocal where you would actually hear words said to you that, or you would hear, you know, oh, you you might be pretty, but, you know, oh, you're so dark, you know. So I mean, there are other things that are that are added on to, to actually continue to break the communication between black men, especially dark skinned black men and women. Okay, because she's she's not the one that's approached. And um there's a there's a course of continuous rejection, not only by by the black male but also other black women in your life, you know, people who you look up to. So it's not it's not only the black man that's telling you that somehow you're not good enough. It's also other people within your own family. You know, it's 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 not only it's it's something that's built over our relationship to who we are as black people. So and the black man rejection of the dark skinned black woman sometimes is rejection of himself. Mm -hmm. You know, it's more than just um, right. Looking at this black woman, so it's often he doesn't want to be with with the black woman because he's rejecting a part of who he is, you know. So, um, and this is something that's across our culture, you know, and in many cultures, it's not only even the black race because we're also re not only are we rejecting the dark skin, we're rejecting anything that's associated with it. Now, I are mean, you stating um, the problem or the solution? <laughs> I'm stating the the problem. Okay, now, what's the solution? The solution is to recognize what it is. is that we the communicate? Is this is remedial, to, what we're doing right now, our communicating? Is it remedial? Is it remedial? I don't know if, it, I, don't know if I would call it remedial. Any of the women can chime in on this. Is this communication that we're having now remedial? What, what do you mean by remedial? Remedy. Oh, Is it offering it's a remedy? Yeah. Well, I think often it's it's you know just to talk about it and bring it out in the open because most of the time this type of, of thing is often very difficult for black women for us to talk about. You know what I mean? I do. Because we really have to come down to the understanding that this is something that's not only affecting us as, as dark-skinned black women, but it's also affecting our children. It's affecting the way the, the image that is being perpetuated on us, about us, often. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's affecting our relationship as men and women. So, and you are the one who were talking about communicating. So, I mean, it's like, this is communication. Hello? Yeah, where's the smart lady? I want to hear her chime in on it. This the is all three. Because I, I said three smart ladies on the line, that's for sure. Well, I know all of you are smart, but I'm just picking out one for purposes of order. The smart one that's, uh, that, it, do you think this conversation is remedial? We're talking about something we say is often not spoken of, as the lady just acknowledged. So we are talking about it now, right? I think I think that it is. I think that okay. it's remedial. It, I don't think that it's as, it as as it is as remedial as I had hoped because I think right. this is so 
uh, this is such, I mean, this is such a emotional, deep issue that uh, there have been no females who would classify themselves as not light, light skin, who were not ad, uh, invited to be part of the host panel. In other words, we've got LBM on the line, who's part of the host panel. We've got myself, and we've got uh, Ivy, who was invited. The other female who called and who, you know, who's been a guest on this program has said that she could pass for non-black, and yet my switchboard is lit up. This is a very emotional topic, and, and the only thing that I could conclude is that um, we as a group, meaning black females as a group, don't trust the intentions of black males to ever acknowledge that they have this issue mm. with mm -hmm. us and yeah. that they are actually going to admit to it and, and administer some self remedy about well, it. Well, mm -hmm. I acknowledge that it exists, and I acknowledge why. Now, the lady uh, that we were speaking to just a moment ago, she said that women, and I said this earlier too, women are as much of a part of your discomfort uh, in, uh, I guess you would call it rejection or non-acceptance, as men are. But the men that are that way, I'm telling you, I don't think these are mature men because we don't care about that that's not that important to us as long as you're weight as long as you're hot and as long as you have a good attitude we're in we'll date you we'll love you and we'll marry you with the prenup <laughs> with the pre <laughs> um <laughs> that's, that's that's very interesting because uh you know the, the the black males that I know of who are very well to do, they tend not to do the prenups as long as she's not black. If she's black, you can bet the prenup. Um, so any man, let, let me just say this uh, categorically: <laughs> any man who gets married today without a prenup, and it's not the woman, it's the law, is stupid. They're financially irresponsible because just like you buy homeowners insurance, automobile insurance, life insurance. Your prenup is a type of insurance that you know the person better, and you you can even uh, you know include in it a sunset clause to where it goes away after 15 years, which you feel has allowed you sufficient time to get to know the woman. But since women bring 75 percent of divorces, uh, a man is a fool to not uh, you know protect himself. Okay. Mm. Can, let me. Can I just say to uh, to the caller? Uh, I, I I I just I want to reiterate. It's not that black men and women are not getting together. We are getting together. There's something else happening under this system of white domination that prevents a number of black men from wanting to get married. A lot of that is economic. So we're 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 we we're, we're getting together. We're having children together, but we're not pulling that family unit together. And so we need to we we need to be very real about the reasons as to why that is not happening. Um, that that's that's one thing. Um, the second thing I wanted to ask you: Are you married? No. Okay, I am married. I'm married to a black man who is a tradesman. Okay, so this, I, I don't, I don't, what you're saying that black women don't want plumbers and electricians and carpenters and I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not seeing that. I'm just, I'm really, really just not. Well, well while that's, but, well, while um, that's, I'm sorry, let me know when I can speak because we have a delay. Hello? Yes. Speak, Go ahead, and and then I'll speak once you finish. No, I'm 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 just saying to you, I I am married. Cree is also married. We're both married to black men. Well, wonderful, and I hope you're happily married. Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. see, see, you misquoted me. I, I didn't say. I, I said two things. The first point I was making is is that black men make more money than black women. Now, the lady quoted, the engineer-type lady, I think, quoted, that that was out of the griot, that black single women are worth a mere $5, uh, net worth, net worth, um, $5. And so uh, other sources have corroborated that, by the way. 
But what I was saying is that generally a black woman will use the wrong criteria for selecting a man. She'll talk about a man on her level means he has to have the same degree that she has and um, have the same level of sophistication that she thinks that she has. But her degrees are not a criteria for love as far as a man is concerned. We want to know about your heart. Are you supportive? Are you nice to us? Are, are you, you good a- looking? Are you good looking? Every every study shows that men weight looks much heavy, more heavily in terms of date and mate selection than do females. Look and and here's a big here's a shock. I'll have to look for the uh the report on this. But black females weight looks much more so than any other female looks. Physical, sexual appeal is more important black to us. Black women? Yes, black women than all other females. That's true. I would agree with that. <laughs> but but um, the point of it is that, that okay, you, you, you broke in on what I was saying and we understand that men want women that they want to have sex with. In other words, we have to get an erection, okay? Right. So we have to like the way you look enough and, to bring and, about and that, that erection. And that's why you should chase us, and we should wait for you to chase us rather than us chasing you. Because no, no, no. Chasing, <laughs> chasing you is not what causes the We lose a, an erection chasing you. Uh, chasing, chasing an adult is foolish. And, and if you tell me what that means, if you paint a picture of a woman who wants to talk to a man and a man who wants to talk to a woman and he's got to chase her, tell me what that looks like because I don't know. Well, no, wait. I, what I do not mean that he should have to chase her to talk with her. Absolutely not. What I, I do mean is that the uh, courting, the pursuit, the burden of that is on the male. But and that's the only of, because you say so. Wait, wait, Today, wait, 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 wait. the, the yeah, I've been, should... I've been interrupting you, and so I've said a, I've said a bad model. I'm sorry. Go ahead. We we do only have eight eight minutes, so I, uh, go ahead. This is intense, but go ahead. Uh, there, this whole thing of the the male having to be the one who maintains the erection, absolutely, and <laughs> and Thanks. but 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 the, the <laughs> you know the the, the but the, but there is also this because of that the burden is on the female. To maintain to to remain physically attractive enough throughout the you know or whatever other uh, uh, characteristics are necessary for him to be sexually attracted to her sexually attracted and so uh, you know I'm I'm talking about evolution but I'm also talking about my own personal experience too here which is that sure I mean there are guys out there who you know before I was married who I could not only approach but put in more work at the beginning than he did. But you know what? That never went very, you know, that never lasted that long. The ones that last and are stable are the ones who put work in to pursue me. That's what courting is all about. And and I think it's actually correct. If a woman just, you know, prostrates herself pretty early, which white women do much more frequently than black females, by the way, if you prostrate yourself pretty early, what you're, gonna, you're just going to get, you're just going to get uh, bonked. For as long as it's good, and the next, and then when he really finds something that he really wants, says he's going to go after that. Not that that happened to me, but I'm only saying. <laughs> <laughs> let, let, let me let me let me just say right. this because see, <laughs> let, let me say this because you, you know the old statement is if you do the same thing you've always done, you'll always get what you've always gotten. Now most blacks have some affinity to Christianity. Adam did not chase Eve. He was not a hunter gatherer. Man was not created a hunter-gatherer. Fruit don't uh, elude anyone or try to escape from them. Uh, They were brought together vis-a-vis a a referral. God is the great matchmaker. Uh, and, And in most parts of the world, the parents actually do the selecting of the mates. I think we have got it all wrong, and they have a lower divorce rate, by the way, so the point of it is what I'm telling you, and I think you agreed at least for a microsecond, is that the communication, that's all I'm talking about. I mean, I could, if, if a man feels that a woman is worth 
you know, spending some time to get to know, and that's about the best way I can say that, well, right. that's fine based upon their conversation. But if the woman is not equally as interested in the conversation, it doesn't happen, and we end up with what we've got, what we have right now. But the model for male-female relationships does not fit what you just said per the account in Genesis, if you identify with that. Well, Can you acknowledge I, that and stand corrected? Well, I, I, I don't identify with that. I, I, I would not uh, call myself a Christian, and it looks like I hear other people want to speak. Yeah. Craig, I, I really, I must ask you this question, and I'm very sorry that we're down to the last minute. I, I wanted you and Esther to weigh in on this, but um, uh, particularly you. Uh, answer this question for me. Could Precious have been made with a the same story, the same size, everything the same, except that she were light complexion? You're asking whom now? You. No. It wouldn't have gotten green lighted. No. Mm-hmm. Esther, uh, let me see if I can if, if he's still there. Esther, do you are you there? He must have stepped away. Okay, he's not there. What do you think? Is Ivy still on the line? Yes. Oh, yeah, Ivy, I'm still Ivy. here. Okay. I'm still here. I do, do I don't think, think that it would have been green lighted. No, I don't think so light? either. Okay. I okay. I think that part of them making it was to continue to to push the image of the black woman being abused. It's easy for us to see that, you see, to watch that kind of a film to see the black woman constantly under that type of um to me degrading experience, exploitive experience. It's easy for us to watch that. I, You know, when I'm on, uh, when I'm out and about, I hear young black kids uh, joking with each other, insulting one another, um, black boys insulting black girls by simply saying precious, calling precious, them precious and laughing. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And I work in a middle school, and that's that's exactly what happens all the time. It happens all the time. So I mean, yeah. it's, 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 it wasn't a healing film. It wasn't a film that was there to help, and you know, and we didn't have a, a real big conversation after the film to talk about what what all of the imagery meant. You know, the darkness, the dark imagery, the the ugliness of it all meant, you know, the depressive image, what it, what it all meant. I mean, it, that I mean, was a ma- yeah, it was a masterful piece of, of propaganda. Um, I yes. would say it was just total, total propaganda. Um, yes. I, I I feel like with the two minutes left, I need to say that I have spoken with, and and sometimes on this program, I have spoken with. Uh, three or four black males in my lifetime who have admitted that they had that color bias and who said to themselves, I need to get over it. And they were able to administer uh, a program that got them over it. And each and every one of them said that it it, it involved ex- immersing themselves in imagery of dark skin, beautiful black females and putting pictures all over the place and putting them in, on walls and refusing to watch television or look at any of the other images that would... Uh, buy into the previous programming. And uh, mm. I, I wish that there had been some more males who had called so we could talk about that. But I think that the, the, that the way the conversation went and the, and the kinds of people who didn't call, meaning the males who said that was me or that is me, as just callers to say, hey, this has been my experience, but I've met someone who's, who's you know, who's made me feel better about it, or uh, mm-hmm. this is my experience and I would like uh, the brothers to get better about it, really speaks to the depth of the problem that we have. And uh, uh, as far as the, I, I, we only have like a minute left. So I don't have any programs that are in the calendar right now, but by mm, by tomorrow I'll uh, I'll be putting two additional programs in. So if you want to keep up with what the Cree venue is going to be doing within the next couple or three weeks, make sure to check back on the site tomorrow. And I will leave the last 
30 seconds to IV and to LBM? Um, I, I just, you know, again, the goal is to, is to fight this, this system, is to, is to eradicate this thing of white domination. That, that's the goal. And so, you know, we, this issue is, it's not a superficial issue. It affects how we're dealing with one another, how we're regarding one another. And, you know, it just, it, it, it needs, it needs to really be, uh, discussed, un uncovered, because as you just said, those, those of us who, who are able to admit that it is a problem and, you know, want to work on the problem, take, take steps to, to work on the problem, we, you know, we, we see, we've seen the benefits of it. Absolutely. Right. We are out and, of we, right. and we see that it has to be a conscious effort. Indeed. We are out of time, and, and I am so sorry. Uh, but, uh, Ivy, we'll have to have you back again, but we're absolutely out of time. I don't even know if this will be caught on the recording. I hope so. This is yes, the counter I'll definitely people. have to come back. <laughs> Going to have you back, most definitely. Uh, Thank you, Ivy. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you, everyone, for LBM. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you everyone, please. for Thank you. Thank, thank you, everyone, for listening, calling in, and those of you who are listening on the archives. This has been the Counter Racist Evolving Engineer Program for Thursday, February 9th, 2012, signing out. <laughs>